Stardate, 71816.4. We have set out on our year-long mission to obtain the Cosmo Reverse System from the planet Iskandar. It is our only hope to undo the damage done to our planet by the Gamalos, and save the Earth from sure destruction. We only have one shot, and if we are too late returning to the Earth from the other side of the galaxy, all that we know and love will be lost. We can't say for sure what our odds are, but we do know that the Dub Talk podcast may contain language that is unsuitable for younger audiences, and that listener discretion is advised. Also, please be aware that there will be spoilers for Star Blazers Space Battleship Yamato 2199, as well as any other anime that may be discussed, so keep that in mind if there is a series you haven't finished yet. And finally, all thoughts and opinions expressed within the episode are those of the current participants and do not represent Dub Talk as a whole. Aside from that, strap in for this year-long voyage, listeners, and enjoy. Greetings, viewers. You're about to go on a fantastical journey through space and time. A long journey to save our planet from a terrible menace. Undubbed anime. But, thankfully, we have a solution. The wonderful dub for the hit new show, not that new, but new to us, Star Blazers Space Battleship Yamato 2199. Uh, I am your captain tonight, Amon, and here to join me on here we have Communications Officer Hardy. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a Communications Officer. Dr. Hardy. We have Chief Engineer Roots. I can't do it, Captain. And Lieutenant Megan. Wait a minute, this Carnival Cruise fucking sucks. <laughs> It's not a water slide or an open bar. What did you sign me up for? You said that this was a cruise to space Alaska with the space whales. <laughs> I may have exaggerated this, the Alaska and the whales part, but there's a lot of space. A lot of space. Welcome to Love Boat, the next generation. The Love Boat. Now I just want to do a lot of edits of that uh, opening crawl sequence with the uh, life preservers just with the cast of this show. Man. This a new lot episode. of boning while saving the earth. <laughs> <sighs> Man, this new gritty reboot of Gilligan's Island is wild. <laughs> they only said it was a three hour tour. <laughs> so when did we go back in time to San Francisco and save two whales? Uh, that's the series after the one that's airing now. Oh, okay. And one of the not very good ones at that. <sighs> but uh, we are here to take up, talk about a uh, space battleship Yamato 2199. The year is 2199. No shit. Guessed. <laughs> really bad. Earth is being menaced by evil blue space Nazis from across the other side of the universe. But a kindly alien race has said that they will have a way to help prevent the uh, and undo the devastation that has been done to the Earth. But they're going to have to get to the other side of the universe to go get a MacGuffin first. And it will take them a very long time. But Is it McDonald's Egg McGuffin? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, podcast is over. Good night, everyone. <laughs> I just had a Jamal moment. Oh, my God. God. I hope you're proud of yourself. Ugh. That might be the worst joke I've ever actually done on this podcast. <laughs> and I was in the Shimanata episode and made a, a joke about a man, a man's genitals being like an animal that races. We didn't even make it to five uh. minutes. <laughs> Amazing. Uh. Come on, please continue. Happily, they have an easy way to get themselves across the universe. They have retrofitted. Uh, a, a World War II battleship into the sleekest, newest, fanciest spa spaceship in the world, the Yamato, and thus begins their uh, journey to try and get to this uh, for this distant planet and back within a year before Earth finally just succumbs to all the horrible things that have happened to it. Uh, obviously, the show's been a long time coming. It actually came out about five years ago, and uh, Voyager tried to uh, do stuff with it, and it went badly. Uh, and then they decided, eh, let's just give it to Funimation. They know what they're doing. And so we're here to talk about this wonderful dub. Uh, and to start us off, uh, we're going to, because this show, this episode is going to take long enough as it is, we are covering 35 characters. Please don't pass out. Oh boy. Uh, oh. 
So yeah, I got yeah. a case uh, of the vapors. Exact the space vapors, if you will. In space, no one can hear you faint like a southern woman. Exactly. So let's without further ado, let's get started by talking about our ADR director and our script writer. Uh, ADR for this show, uh, the direction was done by Jerry Jewell, who you would know for directing such shows as Free, uh, Orange, and Seraph at the end. And the script was written by Jared Hedges, who you would know for writing such stuff as Gangster and Ping Pong. Ladies, gentlemen, what did we think of the direction and writing? Hardy, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, I'm probably going to be very, very boring this episode, mainly because... I don't really have a whole lot to say about the various performances and the writing. Uh, I would have to say that, all in all, I'm going to go more into this on final thoughts, but uh, all in all, I'm very happy with pretty much everything. One of, one of the things I did like, that's a subtle touch, is that the dub is a little bit, a tiny bit on the hokey side. And it works well considering the subject matter, because the whole show has this very sort of 1970s retro feel to it. It, it, it blends in really well. Uh, there are no instances to where I was put off by any writing issues. Like, I didn't notice any slang that should not have been in there, or any references that would have dated it. Uh, everything flew, flowed very well. And um, yeah, that's, that's all I really have to say about it. All right, excellent. Uh, Roots? Yeah, um, I largely agree with Hardy, but I'd also like to add that um, the the feeling of being slightly hokey, it it feels like it's... I, I don't know how to word this. Um, it feels like a 2005-ish Funimation dub, which, like, in a lot of circumstances, that would be an insult, but not definitely not here, because it actually works to the show's favor. Uh, the, the script writing feels a bit loose, and honestly, considering how, considering how loose it was for the original Star Blazers anime, uh, it, it felt kind of refreshing. And as for direction, it, like I said, it feels like Jerry Jewell took a time machine, grabbed himself from, like, somewhere between 2005 and 2008, brought him to our time and asked him to direct the show. And it feels really nice. All right. Excellent. Uh, Megan. So I want to preface this with the fact that I don't like a lot of sci-fi shows. Um, I usually, when I usually watch them, I don't have a really good time. I'll enjoy the dubs. <laughs> Franks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Franks. <laughs> oh God. I've got something caught in my throat and it's awful. Um, <laughs> But eh. is it ham is it ham fisted sexual imagery in thematics? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe it is. Maybe they should just pull the trigger on that show. Ooh, um anyway, wah, back wah. to what I was saying. Uh so I was actually really surprised with how much I enjoyed the show, and the dub really did help that. This felt like something that I could sit and watch on like Netflix that like, a lot of people could really get into, even if they didn't like anime, and they remembered this show from their childhood, like, any of my aunts and uncles and stuff, and the cast worked really well for that. This is a cast that, outside of a couple of characters, because I just know their voices really well, or, hey, this is a little bit unexpected of them to be this character, I can't name a lot of the cast off the top of my head. But I can name the ca- but I also can't name the characters because there's way too many of them. <laughs> Uh, so they all blend in really great. I think Jerry Jewell's direction on this was superb. There was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears put into this show. Um, especially even before it began. Like, if I'm right, this was the show that Caitlin Glass called out somebody on for watching it pirated on a plane, right? Yes, yes, yes they did. Uh, because, like I said, this came out in 2012, and basically the license holders would not give it to anybody for a very long time, so you could not get it here. And yeah, someone was like watching it on their phone, and she was like, don't do that. Yeah, please don't pirate. Like, and a bunch I of know people it's... gave her a bunch of, like, a bunch of shit for it. And it's like, oh, well, you just are saying that so you could keep a meal on the table, which, yes, also B, it's a good thing to not pirate. And then, I, know, I know, I know, how, how dare she want to fucking eat? God, what a woman. What a dirty, dirty whore. The nerve of how some people. That. Oh, Caitlin is not a dirty, dirty whore. She's a good person. You're mean. No, we like Caitlin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Caitlin, but, Caitlin's good people. Yeah, 
But no, this is a really, really good dub, and I wish I had actually started this before the dubbies last year, because I probably would have gotten some. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> so, I feel dumb for not starting this as of now, uh, and I have a tweet out there that literally just states, me at the beginning of episode one, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this Yabuto show. Me at episode 24, Yabuto! Ah! <laughs> And the dub really did play to a lot of those failings. So good job, uh, Jerry and Jared. Uh, also, which this is by far the strongest Jerry Jewel dub that exists. Bar I, none. I'm going to have to uh, give you a little piece of info, Megan. There's a workaround for the dubbies because 2202 is this year. Yeah. Dude, if it's at the same quality as 20, 2109, but I, I doubt that that's... Uh, 2191, but I doubt that's an issue. The yeah, bummer it's... is I gave 2199 one of my dubbies, so I probably can't do the same for 2202. Well, you yeah, were no, smart but... and thought ahead. But yeah, but seriously though, bar none, like out of all of the Jerry Jewel dubs that exist, this is his opus at this point. Yeah, very mm. much so. Yeah, I'm 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 in pretty strong agreement. I uh I I I was looking forward to this, although I don't have a lot of experience with like the Yamato franchise, mostly because a lot of it's not very easy to get anymore. <clears throat> I believe the entire original series is out of print. It is. Yeah, it's been it it it, it has been issued over here, but it was that was like 10, 15 years ago, and none of that's still readily available anymore. I, I, this is this is this is you can get this, and I think you can get the like live action movie from like. I, Almost I've 10 seen years the live, ago at this point. The live action movie is the only thing of Yamato I've ever seen before the show. That must have been interesting. I um, walked in for the last half of it at a con and I was like, oh yeah, he's totally gonna bang X character is totally gonna bang that character and she's pregnant with his baby at this point of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um Anyway, so, so I was I was looking forward to this, but I didn't really know what to expect, and I was blown away both by the show and the dub. I thought this was very, very strong. Uh, I thought the writing was excellent. I liked... One of the things I enjoy so much about the show is that it feels modern, but it doesn't really go out of its way to update anything. Uh, see the opening song with, like, its big brassy horns and its disco beat and its, like, 70s Anka vocals. Yeah. Uh, and I, I like the fact that the... The script did not feel so. It did not feel the way to like. Oh, we need to make this hip and modern for the kids or anything like that. It was like, yeah, no, this is like a serious show. We know who our audience point. is. We know who our audience is. They're the same people who can think of no better way to spend a Saturday afternoon than watching, um, you know, uh, the Dirty Dozen or something on TBS. Yeah. Like that's who's gonna watch this. We know how to appeal to those people. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I like that. I thought Jurgil's direction was excellent, particularly given that he just has. So many characters to balance, and so many of whom have, like, prominent roles. So, you know, you're not just, like, filling in somebody who has five lines. It's like, no, they're going to show up a lot, and they're going to do things. And we need to have somebody who can pull their weight when it comes down to it. And I, I was just, I was very happy with this. This is a delight to watch. Uh, and I'm, I'm, like, I'm happy it's finally readily available, and I'm happy it has something so strong attached to it. So, like, uh, you know, thumbs up, guys. Mm -hmm. You did well. Uh... And on that note, let's start getting to the cast itself. Uh, so, uh, as, as we mentioned, we're going through a lot of characters, so we're not going to talk a lot about previous roles you've done some of these actors for. We're just getting into the nitty-gritty. And uh, first up, we have our villains, the Garmalaws. They're evil. They're blue. Half of them are kind of named after Nazis. It's weird. <laughs> and they speak Russian. Fun times. <laughs> Pretty much. It's probably supposed to be fake German, but yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, In Mother Russia, Deutsch land you, land Deutsch you. <laughs> <laughs> Yakov Smirnov, what are you doing here? Stop being such Yakov. a stop being such a Deutsch bag. <laughs> Yakov Smirnov here for Carnival Cruise Lines. Coming up next, <sighs> coming up next, the Spin Doctors at the Iowa State Fair. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Gamala State Fair. We deep fry our enemies. <laughs> um, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna cover. <laughs> they're big. They're blue. They're mean, and uh, they're gonna be some of the people we're covering first. Uh, first up, our, our first set of characters. We have Mizela Celesta, uh, who is not actually a Gamala. She is from one of the many many alien races that they have subjugated over the years. Uh, she's a propaganda minister for the uh, Gamelon Empire, and she's played by Jennifer Green. Uh, we have Haidon Gim Gimble, who is a general director and uh, sort of 
just this very weasley looking man who is played by John Grimillion. Uh, we have Jim Johnson, a uh, he's a fear. Uh, sorry, no, sorry. We have Herm Zolisk, who's played by Jim Johnson. Uh, Herm is a uh, he's a field marshal in the army. He tries to pull off a coup at one point. It ends badly. As most coups do. Uh, Exactly. Uh, we have Gurt Gore, a general and all-around coward, who's played by Barry Yondell. And uh, last but certainly not least, we have Lieutenant Colonel Wolf Flurkin, a space submarine operator played by David Wald, who has a very excellent mustache. Just just look at that Like, thing. that is like Burt Reynolds tier mustache right there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's, that's, he, he no, no, in no, a no. show that's already pretty, mm -hmm. He's Blue Tom Selleck. I mean, he is. I was going to say he's Blue Captain Harlock. <laughs> he's, he's Blue Captain Harlock, played by Tom Selleck. Selleck. Pretty much. There we go. Tom, if Tom Selleck and Captain Harlock... If Tom Selleck, Captain Harlock, and a Smurf had a three-way, <laughs> this would be the result. Please do not make fan art of that. Well, now, now that you've brought I mean, it up, Hardy, they're going to do you, it just to spite us. If you want to do it, that's your thing, but just don't if send it our fetish, way. Don't don't add us, kids, please. However, do at Manga Man Nine Thousand. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. That's not even his handle. We're, they're gonna send it to some rando. Oh, oh is Manga Man Eight Thousand? No, it's Nine Thousand. His... Yeah, no, it's Manga Man Nine Thousand. <laughs> yeah, his Classy Spartans only on the Discord. Oh, anyway. I, I thought it was like Eight Thousand, but anyway. No. Consider consider this retribution for any time. Um, uh, He's gonna get nine thousand images of Captain Harlock. <laughs> Cons consider it for a retribution for every time some thick lady shows up in my feet because he liked it. Uh, anyways, oh, what did cool. we think of? <laughs> before we get before we get railed too far, what did we all think of this? Uh, of the people in this little set here, Hardy. Um, I, like I said, I'm probably gonna be really boring and be a broken record this episode i think everybody sounded fine um as far as gimla and zoilik or if I, i'm probably butchering their names they didn't really stand out very much um uh the really the only ones that we can who had a, a real presence are uh Mizela and and definitely goer goer is just this horrible little worm and i wanted to watch him die so many times and when it finally happened, I'm like, thank God. But Barry Yandel plays him very well. Uh, he definitely has the whole coward ish down. Because he played basically the same character, if you remember, in the original Full Metal Alchemist. The little cowardly, sniveling person. Oh, the Yogi! Oh, yeah. Yogi, yeah. And, uh, okay. and as far as Blue Harlock is concerned, David Wall is always good in everything. So, I mean, I wish uh, Flurkin showed up more, because he's pretty awesome. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, just everyone sounded really good. Uh, also, I should I should uh, just as a fun note, since we're comparing Flurkin to um, uh, Harlock, I should note that the original Yamato uh, anime was in fact directed by Leiji Matsumoto, and he also did a uh, manga adaptation that came out at the same time. So that's probably not an accident. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, Roots, you go. Um, so, unfortunately, Gimla is somebody I really can't recall his performance very much. But, you know, like, all all the Gamalas who had a prominent role really, really kind of popped. So, I I can probably say John Grimillion did a really good job. Um, I, I really liked Zolik and the, the episode where his coup was kind of revealed and, like, his shocked reaction was really, really nice. Surprise! Uh, <laughs> Barry Yandel as Gur. Dear God. Like, I I knew I know Barry Yandel is capable of playing the greasy weasel character, but oh my god, it was just a delight. Especially with him groveling to uh groveling to Dressler. Dessler. It was Dessler, I'm sorry. Like it every I I would chuckle whenever he was on screen, because he he just played it really, really well. And um, going back to uh, Celestella, God, her the, the episode that was focused on her scared the living daylights out of me. Like, that was genuinely good horror anime right there. And 
I, I really like Jennifer Green's performance, particularly in, like, the last arc of the show where she's she's betrayed and killed by uh, by Desler and, like... That seems to happen that, that a lot was... with Desler. Yeah. Yeah. This is a man who has a drop, like... Like a cartoon villain <laughs> strap door. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna get more into that on for Desler, uh, anyways. But you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. And Sorry. okay, can we talk for a minute about David Wald playing Lieutenant Colonel Fun? Yes. <laughs> Colonel Fun. Like the Fun Police got a promotion here. <laughs> <laughs> Went up a couple ranks. Good job, David Wald. Like he's, I I really like that he sort of played him as like the hunter going after prey and all that. And I really like when he, when more or less the Gamelot switch allegiances in the last arc. And he, he's actually the one who kills Goer. And like, that's, that's great. David Wald's really good. Solid performances all around. Excellent. Uh, Megan. But yeah, no, I got to agree with everybody else. I wish I knew, uh, I wish I could appreciate Josh Gromelian as Gimlick more. He was really good. Uh, but he was kind of very, like, as a character, forgettable. He was just one of the many people uh, brown-nosing up Dressler's booty. Um, Jim Johnson as Zolik. I do remember Zolik because I remember when he's like, Guys, I was just kidding. Guys? <laughs> Guys? Oh, no! And, and, then, then he... and he gets and he gets to suffer the ultimate indignity of being shot by the biggest coward in the army. Yeah. They get shot by Barry Andel, which is... Yeah, hey, Barry Endell's in this show. I'm trying to think of other shows. I like Barry Endell in most things I watch. Um, it's Barry, Barry, yeah, Barry and no, that's Randy Perlman is my is my buddy. But uh, no, Barry Endell as uh, Space Yoki was great. Um, he, he was very looks genu- like Yoki. Kind of. He's yeah. too, He's way too. He's he's way too buff to be Yoki. Yoki was like a shit of a man. This guy at least has some meat. I mean, Yoki after pumping some iron, I guess. But anyway. Blue space Yoki. Uh, but I've also got to agree about with uh, Roots about Costella's episode, the Space Witches episode, being absolutely pitch-shittingly terrifying. She worked really great with, I believe it was Lindsay Seidel as uh, the other one that actually goes on the ship and messes with them. Or as I know it wasn't Cher. It's either Sheremy or Lindsay. I just called the character Space Sunico because she sounded exactly like Sunico from Shiki. Um, but she was really great. She was genuinely creepy at times, yet, like, very clever and very lovesick, which, I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess you could fall for Space Hitler if he saves you, but, and then she dies, and I was like, oh, man, if you would have just not, like, been a lovesick puppy for Space Hitler, you probably would have made it out. Uh, but the real star of this is, in fact, Captain Harlock, Blue Edition. David Wald was great, because that dude was like, he was like, hell yeah, I'm here, but like, in like the most gruff dad voice ever. And, I mean, he lived all, I mean, he and his crew all lived in an interdimensional submarine, an interdimensional submarine, an interdimensional submarine. I've been waiting to do that joke for so long. Uh... But no, David Wald was great. I wish this character show. I hope this character shows up more in twenty two oh two, because I want to hear more of David Wald as as Wolf. He was the best. I think probably my favorite out of this whole group, with Jennifer just behind. Which, uh, if I can go back to Jennifer really quick, I'm really only used to hearing her as Alice from the Ancient Magus Bride, and this was a really big departure in tone from Alice's gruffness to her like regality. As a character, so go I'm on. Uh, no, I'm in agreement here. This is a, this is a very strong group of people. Um, as you mentioned, um, Gimmel doesn't get to do that much, but uh, I thought John Gramellion really sold the kind of like innate, just sort of slimy ass kissingness of the character, where he'll, he'll just you know, fawn up to the boss because that's how you get that's how you don't get a uh, that's how you don't get a section of a space station dropped on you. You know, as you do. Uh, so he, he was fun. I like Jim Johnson as Zolik as just sort of this big, brash, kind of obnoxious dude who clearly thinks he's going to get his way until it becomes very obvious that he's not going to get his way. Um, 
Very Endel is just an absolute treat. I, I, did, like, I didn't like Goer as a character, but I just loved it whenever he showed up because he's so... He's so useless. <laughs> but he manages to kind of fail upward for most of the show because he has just enough survival instinct to do the right thing at the right time. Um, so he, he was just a delight to listen to. And uh, I, I really like Jennifer Green playing um, Celestella in part just because, like... I wasn't expecting that character to have such kind of like a like a a tragic arc to her where she is like she feels so indebted to this man who at the end of the day just does not care about her whatsoever. Um, and I, I thought Jenner, you know, she did this nice this sort of regal noble thing, but also brought out what kind of made her story so sad. Um, but like everyone else, I, I have to agree the standard here is definitely David Wald <laughs> because just <laughs> you go Blue Harlock. In a, in a show that's already pretty aggressively 70s, it doesn't get more 70s than Wolf Lurkin. And David Wall just pulled it exactly right. It's like, he comes on screen, it's like, ah, oh, this, this is the cool guy. <laughs> this is the cool character in the show. Yeah. This guy. Like you, we? This, this guy. guy. <laughs> this, guy. <laughs> this guy popping in out of red portals, being a nuisance. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was very happy with all these characters. Uh, they were all very good. And uh, on that, let's get back. Let's head on to another set of uh, ga gamelins. Uh, here we have uh, some more, because there's like eight billion people in this entire show. Uh, it's true. Too many we all cooks. know it's true. Too many cooks. Too many cooks. Too many cooks. Too many Smurfs. Uh, <laughs> too many Smurfs. Smurfs in space. <laughs> so for for. For our next group of Space Spurfs, we have uh, General Ehrlich Dummel, a.k.a. The Space Wolf, played by J. Michael Tatum. Uh, his wife, Ilsa Dummel, played by Kate Oxley. Admiral Gould Dietz, played by Ben Bryant. And uh, Lower Storm Leader, Melda Dietz, played by Caitlin Barr. Oh Hardy, boy, I, here comes Hardy, the wife. Hardy, I feel like you have opinions on at least one of these characters, if you like to go. Yes, I would. Um, again, everyone did generally a very good job um we don't really get honestly i'm kind of surprised because i'm usually not the biggest fan of kate oxley and uh, i think she did fine as elisa um tatum of course is tatum his he brings a very uh very strong demanding almost ham-like performance uh for dommel and uh he's always fun to watch uh gold deets doesn't really didn't really make that much of an impression on me at first, but uh, it sounded fine. And I have a new waifu, guys. <laughs> yes, I... So he's a, a big day in a man's life when he gets a brand new waifu. <laughs> yes, because Melda is best girl, and I absolutely love her. And don't you dare say anything bad about my Smurf ride. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, once you go blue. Yeah, that's all you'll want to do. <laughs> but, I, but I noticed something. I noticed something. She's a blue girl with red hair. Did you realize you know who that is, right? Purple? She's Mystique. Oh, God, she's space Oh, girl. no. <laughs> yeah. And so now oh, I have to see fan art. I would like to see fan art of Melda cosplaying as Mystique. The original, not the you know naked live action version. So, 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 so the white outfit from the seventies. Right, you're yeah. saying, okay, yeah. but yeah, da -da 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 -da. I was about to say, da -da -da. yeah. But for the longest time, I didn't know Caitlin Barr is kind of a new actress, and I'm really not familiar with her. For the longest time, I thought she was being voiced by uh, Morgan Garrett. Uh, so that's certainly not an insult or anything, but yeah, I, Caitlin Barr did an excellent job, and uh, yeah, I just absolutely adore this character. And we'll have to, when we get later on, we'll be introduced to her future wife. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, roots. All right. So um, I, I really appreciate the, the sort of regal demeanor Kate Oxley gave to uh, Elisa Domo. Especially, it was her in the prison swap episode, right? Yes. Yes. Where, where she's basically the one who had the um, the the training and regality. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. That's her. That's her. Yeah, I I really like that. Um, I really have to hand it to uh, to Tatum as as um, 
Eric Domo. Like, especially his last episode where he's he's doing battle with the Yamato. And then it's clear he lost. He flies in and he gives this great speech before uh, before he sacrifices himself to try and do as much damage to the Yamato as he can. Like, that is some great A ham right there. And a lot of the Gamalas are basically the scenery chewers of the show. And I, I, I really liked it. Uh, ben Bryant didn't, like, like Hardy, uh, didn't re he didn't really leave much of an impression on me, so I, I can't really say much. Generally a good performance, though. Uh, Caitlin Barr as Melda Dietz. I liked it. It sort of had a low-key, like, a, a low-key regality to it, and I, I really liked it. Excellent. Uh, Megan? Um... So, let me think about what I want to do. Damn it, game. Uh, totally not scouting. Uh, right now, <laughs> I'm totally not scouting on Love Live. You're not, you're not playing Love Live? No! Oh, no! Oh. Love Live. I did totally not just get a UR out of that game. Cafe Mood Umi, fuck yeah. Um, no, so let's start off with, uh, Caitlin, uh, Kate Oxley and Ben Bryan as Ghoul Diaz and Elisa Domel. Uh, they are kind of two other, um smurfs that kind of blend into the background unfortunately i will say though i almost kind of cried at um the scene at the grave with domal and with a uh, uh domal and elisa mm. where uh you kind of find out that their their young son was killed or died um and there's this like really great beautiful tension between them and it's just very sweet uh, and then she's, like, very good at being, like, the noble, kind, upper-class woman. And uh, Dietz is kind of good at being, like, the gruff general who's worried about his daughter and kind of concerned about the state of Gamalas and all that fun stuff. Uh, and then uh, Tatum is Space Wolf. The Why is it the guy named Wolf not fucking Space Wolf? <laughs> <laughs> because 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 Eric Dommel is named after actual German military lyric Eric Rommel, who's the Desert Fox. It's a World War II joke. There are a lot in this show. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you find that very interesting. All right, sure, why not? But no, uh, Tatum was really great in this. Um, he chews a lot of scenery, but not in like the typical like, hey, this isn't Tatum playing like Space Smurf Okabe. It's this is like a very regal suit chewing of the scenery. He's very noble, very, very committed to his job. And I think that really plays. And I think also something that really plays in his performance is his uh, kind of disregard for pomp and circumstance. He doesn't really care for like being like paraded around like a giant military puppet. He's just like, eh, fucking here. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Can I get back to doing my job now? Can I go back to, like, you know, protecting our borders and shit? Uh, and then, oh, Caitlin Barr is Melda. Um, the second greatest space, one of the space lesbians trio <laughs> on this ship. Um, y'all, we're, we're here to preach the Bible of Melda Dietz X to a X, uh, ya Akira Yamato. Yeah, it's uh, Ray Yamato. Yamato. Ya not Yamato. Yamamoto. Yama Yamamoto. Thank you. We're here to preach that Bible. But Caitlin Barr is, was really great in this. Um, I'm more familiar with her writing more than her acting, unfortunately, which is my own fault because I believe she was working a lot with Sentai more than she was with Funimation before uh, this and another show that we're going to be talking about this year. Uh, but she was fantastic. Like, she was threatening. She was warm when she needed to be. She was fan-freaking-tastic. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I, I'm in agreement. I like I like this. I like the people playing the set of characters a lot as well. Um, let's see who to start with. I, I had a lot of fun listening to Tatum. Uh, Donald's very hammy, but in, like, kind of a grand Shakespearean actor kind of way. You know, he's, he's, he's hammy the same way, like, Kenneth Branagh is when he's playing Hamlet or something. And that plays to Tatum's strengths a lot, I think. Uh, so he was just a delight to listen to and kind of the sort of 
Yes, yes, you're having a parade. Can I can I go back to doing the fighting the war that's happening, please? Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. No, he was a lot he was a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, I also like Kate Oxley as um Ilsa a lot a lot. I like the way she played off of Tata. I like this kind of serene, you know, uh ar aristocratic um aspect she brought to the character. Uh, I like I like the, I like Brian playing um, Goldeats, even though he, he comparatively doesn't get to do quite as much. He's mostly kind of stern and hopes his daughter is okay because who who doesn't? Uh, and really, if you're if you're if your daughter's Melda, you want her to be safe because look at her, she's great, and Caitlin Barr is great playing her. Um, I particularly like the bit where she has parfait for the first time. <laughs> oh yeah! It's, <laughs> and just it's like oh my god, this is wonderful. What have I been missing out on? Um, no, I, I, I like that she was able to even bring that, that kind of dimension to the role, where she's not just, like, stern, hotshot pilot. Like, she has, she has more depth to her than that, and I thought Caitlin helped bring that out a lot. So I was very happy with her performance as well. Um, and uh, with the blue space, space smurfs out of the way... At least most of them. The, <laughs> most of them. Well, we have one exception, but we'll, we'll get to him. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, now we're on our way to talking about the crew of the Yamato. Yata, this will be, this will be most of the remainder of the episode, so I hope your chair is comfy. Mm -hmm. Uh, to start us off, we're gonna start with the, uh, the people who do all sorts of, uh, nitty-gritty mechanical stuff on the ship. Making sure the ship works, making sure the planes work, all that kind of good stuff. First up, we have, uh, Hiko Zeman Tokugawa, who is played by R. Bruce Elliott. Uh, we have Susumu Yamazaki, who is played by Robert McCollum. Uh, <laughs> Tsukeji Yabu, who is terrible, but played by Ben Phillips, who is not terrible. And uh, I Isami Inomoto, who is played by Brian Massey. Uh, what do you think of these uh, performances? Hardy, would you like to start? Yeah, um, again, broken record. Everyone just did fine. Um, I don't really think there are any major standout performances among these. Uh, as far as Robert is concerned, I did like the moment that he had where he's had to sort of break the news of what actually happened in the past to actually start the war. And, um, the, the element, the, the conflict both with him and Shima at that moment is just tension you could cut with a knife. Um, I really appreciated the moments that Tokugawa had when he was talking with Okita and they were relating back on... I, I, yeah, it's it was Tokugawa, right? It was him and the Doctor who were sort of reminiscing about old times and it, those. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, Ben Phillips as as Yabu really didn't stand out to me, other than his cowardly moments. Um, <laughs> he gets a he gets much better than he deserves. Let's be perfectly honest at the end. And <laughs> and Brian Massey is basically just Brian Massey playing Brian Massey again. So. Yeah, buddy. yeah, that's that's the best compliment that I can give Brian Massey. Brian Massey is Brian Massey in Brian Massey, the anime starring Brian Massey. Directed by Brian Massey. Yes. A Massey Flicks production. <laughs> Featuring but Brian yeah, Massey. That's... <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's basically all I have to say. Excellent. Uh, Roots. Yeah, I I really like that um, R. Bruce Elliott and uh, Robert McCollum both kind of gave their characters, like, the older kind of fatherly um, performances. Because they, the both of them kind of have stories to tell the younger crew members. It Like, it, it's great, especially when, uh, with Tokugawa reminiscing with the Doctor and the Captain and all that. Um, I actually kind of liked... Uh, Yabu's story arc, especially at the end, where he's basically helping the Gamala resistance, and like that, that was really fun, and I really like Ben Phillips's performance. And what bad can I say about Brian Massey? Like, it <laughs> he's he's sort of the uncle character, and like it, it, it's great. He he takes good care of the engineering crew, like, there's it's good. That, that, that's really all I can say. Thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, Megan. If I'm correct, isn't Brian Massey the guy who talks about the fact that Susumu Kodai is basically inept with women? I think so. I think he's the I'm one I remember. 
I think he's the one's like, yeah, no, if a girl had a crush on Kodai, he'd be oblivious. He'd be he's like the slow poke of women. He's like the slow poke of women. <laughs> 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 oh, I gotta get that in there. Um No, but let's go through there. Uh Arbus Elliot as uh, Tokugawa is, A, it's Arbor Sully in an anime. He's the chill, nice older gentleman uh, who gets along with uh, Captain... I can't say what I'm gonna call the Captain because it give away yes. plays him. Um, Okita. You all know exactly where it's oh, going. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, Read you like a I know, book. Like... <laughs> Space book. My picture. I'm so obvious I might as well be a pop-up book. <laughs> That's okay. I'm gonna curl up in a ball and play. Love. I'm gonna curl up in a love life playing ball. I'll see y'all fuckers in August. <laughs> <laughs> Except for you, Amon, who's going to Hawaii and suffering. Mm-hmm. Look at uh, all these nice beaches. <laughs> Terrible. Volcanoes. No. <laughs> Still can't believe you could stop a volcano. People try to stop volcanoes with bombs. Uh, anyway, but no. Uh, Tokugawa was really good to the engine crew. Uh... Same with Yamazaki. I actually could not believe that was R. Bruce Elliott, because I don't think I've ever seen R. Bruce Elliott play a character that old. Like, I'm I'm used to him. Like, I mean, I was expecting him at one point to just pop up behind uh, Kodai and Yuri and go, Now kiss. <laughs> Never letting that one die. <laughs> um, but no, he, the two older gentlemen were great. Uh, Officer uh, Enomoto, a.k.a. Brian Massey, attempts to uh, teach Kodai how to get laid. Uh, he was also great, and he was also kind of like... If the other two were, like, your kind, like, dad figures, he's like Officer Drunk Uncle. <laughs> Without the drunk. He's like, hey, guys! Go inside and call your wives! I got this! Like, he he's the guy, I feel like... I don't know, was it his crew, um... Was it their crew when they all go to Iskand- when they all make it to Iskandar? Um, I should have mentioned this in the scripting segments, because it's one of my favorite lines in the show. Uh, is it him and his crew that when they're on Iskandar and the boat's parked in the water, they're on the part that's under the water and they see Melda and Yamamoto swim by, and I think it's either Brian or Robert that just goes, Man, nature sure is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like the one girl that works in the engine team that just goes men, men. <laughs> men. that was like my favorite line in the show um but no and then there's actual actual gulpin ben phillips as yabu who is as he's kind of got the slimy like He's like evil to mo he's like the evil Pumba to somebody else's evil to moan. And like he's just like, Are you sure we should be doing this? Accidentally fires a gun inside a crowded cockpit. <laughs> like I'm kind I'm kind of like while I'm I'm kinda sad he lived, he also got adopted by a bunch of blue space Nazis learning like, hey, are we the baddies? <laughs> I think we might be the baddies. <laughs> Just, you know exactly the gift that I'm talking about, too. <laughs> Are yeah. we the baddies? It's um, just David Mitchell looking really moon-eyed right now. <laughs> so, uh, like, I was, and my favorite thing about that, too, is they don't realize he's human. They just think he's one of the other races that they've, like, overtaken, and it's like, Hey, this guy's pretty cool. We're gonna take him with us. Prison. It's like also, be he gets wrapped up in a prison break. So like, <laughs> no, I have. I know what it is. It's like we're calling you McLovin. <laughs> it just says McLovin. <laughs> Man, there's not enough weed on that boat for that bo that boat to turn into super bad. Hey. hey, guys, are we on a? <laughs> We're on a space boat. Space boats, yeah. coast to coast. Is this in space? Dude. Who gave roots? Uh, who let roots coming, 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 around? coming this summer from Funimation Space Battleship Yamato 420. <laughs> 420. 
Star places. Dude, where's the other? <laughs> Star places. We have fun here. Dude, where's the Yamato? Where's the Yamato, what if dude? We are the Yamato. Dude, where's the Yamato? Where's the Yamato, dude? Dude, where's the Yamato? Dude, dude, where's my Yamato? Where's the Yamato, dude? <laughs> We've got to keep going. We've got to go on. We're getting through. No, uh, no they, before they, we they, move they, on. They, yes. <laughs> the 420 version, they're not actually on a boat in space. It's a cardboard box they fished out of the dumpster. <laughs> and they're the all name, in, like, With the word Yamato very crudely like, drawn squished. on the side. In marker, sitting out in the parking lot in Texas. I'll and they all have, like, instead of, like, the nice, like, naval uniforms, they're all in, like, newspaper hats just getting really high. <laughs> and it's parked outside of a white castle. <laughs> and then Jay rolls like, up and goes, how like can I make this into a Dragon Ball hat. Z meme? <laughs> <laughs> the box is just on fire because they're baking it in the box. I mean, how else are you gonna hot box? Roots <laughs> makes a valuable point. Anyways, do you have anything, anything else, Megan? Um... Now I'm just imagining, dude, if you thought they were going to get high as fuck in the Yabuto, imagine them being in the interdimensional submarine in Hotbox. Oh, no. <laughs> Guys, no, they don't Hotbox, because whenever you go through, like, hyperspace in this show, it looks like you are on a really bad LSD ship. Guys, yeah. why is there a dragon in the kitchen? <laughs> I don't know, man, but he just made me a awesome sandwich. Go on, I'm on. You can get one of these dragons. I, 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 I also liked these performances. They were very good. Uh, uh, I had a lot of fun listening to Ben Phillips play Yabu, because uh, Yafu's just dumb enough to be good at his job, just smart to be good at his job, but just dumb enough to fall for um, Shinya's prattlings. I like I like the bit where Shinya is like, "Come on, we gotta break out." And he's like, "But I'm hungry, and there are sandwiches. <laughs> Come on, I've been eating anything in days." It's just like, yeah, well, it's the, you're, you're, you have your priorities in the right place, young sir. Uh, it's probably high as balls <laughs> on space weed. <laughs> yes, it's um, the dankest. Um. I, I also really enjoyed our Bruce Elliott playing Tokugawa, just being kind of like, you know, you know, kind of nicely sort of father-grandfatherly, you know, he's good to his men, he's good to people, it's nice fun listening to him, you know, reminisce about old times with the other old dudes in the boat. Uh, I enjoyed Robert McCollum a lot, I thought he got a lot of, you know, you know, Yamazaki's got that air of very much, you know, the guy who's been around a lot and you go to for advice. And I, I thought he brought that to the character. I like the whole bit where he's having to like break to people. It's like, yeah, yeah, no, the entire basis of this entire war is a lie. Like we, you've been lied to your whole life. I'm sorry, that's hard to hear. Um, I'm sorry, and, Shima, your life is a lie. May yeah, I <laughs> offer you some weed in this troubling time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, Brian Brian Massey was uh, cast in the exact role he should have been. I just, I liked how he was like, you know. Tough but gruff, and uh, didn't, didn't you know? Didn't take any crap from his um, comic relief underlings. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was good all around. I like I like these guys a lot. Um, but now now we will go on to now we will go well we will go on to the next section of our episode, which is um, one half uh, one half the weird security team and one half Top Gun. We have yes yes. It's time to talk about like some of the <laughs> best characters. You bet. yes. Starting off, we have uh, in the from the flight squadron of the Yamato, we have Soburu Kato, uh, who is played by Mike McFarland. We have Hi uh, Hiroki Shinohara, who is played by Eric Vale. We have Akira Yamamoto, aka Ray, who is played by Jeannie Tirado. And from security, we have uh, Shinya Ito, <laughs> a backstabbing little snake, played by Justin Cook. And we have Toru. Hoshina, a, uh, a, a, a ninja spy played by Justin Briner. <laughs> Hardy, would you like to start us off? Sure. Um, once again, broken record. I think everyone in general did a really good job. Um, standouts would have to be probably definitely Jeannie Tirado as Rey. Um, and uh, definitely Eric Vale as Shinohara. 
Uh, Eric Vale, in particular, his most uh, impressive moment was, ah, Megan's going to laugh at this, when he goes through the space portal and makes it back. He went through the giant hole. Yes. Eric, go down to hole. <laughs> Eric, go down to hole. Oh, no. I want to flush it again. <laughs> What have I gotten myself into? I'm just old enough to understand that reference. <laughs> Eric goes down the hole. Uh, it puts the lotion on the skin and lets oh, no. Eric get slow face hole again. Oh. <laughs> Moving on. Um, I feel like... Goose! Uh. <laughs> Moving on, I feel like Kato should have made more of an impression than he did. He is just sort of mainly in the background for the most part, but uh, but uh, once again, Mike plays him well. Um, Justin Cook is a slimy little piece of work, and uh, and let's see here. And the other Justin, Justin Briner, is Ninja Cinnamon Roll too pure for this world. But let's go back to Ray. <laughs> Let's go back to Ray. Um, dark skinned girl with white hair. What does that remind you of? Everybody's. Everyone wife. you like? It's Storm. <laughs> We've got the OTP of Storm and Mystique in this show. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. And yeah, it's totally. I, I thought Jeannie did a really good job as Ray. Um. It's funny because I had this bit in my mind of Ray and Melda getting married. And at first, one of them is wearing the tuxedo and the other is wearing the wedding dress. And they're like, this isn't going to work. And so they and so they switch. One of the other wears the wedding dress and the other wears the tuxedo. And it's like, this isn't going to work either. And then the next panel, they're both wearing the wedding dress and just like, no. And the final panel, they're both in tuxedos. They're like, this is perfect. <laughs> That's a lie. They'd both get married in their flight suits. Yeah, I mean, that's probably true. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, that's broken record. Yes, everyone did a great job. Excellent. Uh, Roots. Yeah, I gotta echo Hardy. Great performances all around. I really I really like it when Justin Cook gets to play a snake. Like, I, I'm... There was another instance where he did, and I really liked it. I... I just like it when Justin Cook plays, like, the wormy character. It's, like, it, it... Where's the other time he was playing the wormy character? I can't... I don't recall, to be honest with you. But I... Like, I remember an instance of it where it was really good, and he's really good here. Uh, Justin Briner, as always, plays the characters who are too pure for this world. And, like, I... I was legit worried when he got shot and almost died. Mm-hmm. I was like, gonna be so pissed if he died. I got more attached to him than I thought I would. Especially with the whole with the whole coup arc. Cause like I, I thought he was gonna be a bad guy for a little while and then he wasn't, and it was it was okay. Um I really liked Mike McFarlane's performance as uh as Kato. But when did he have the time to woo the nurse? Like, Look, I mean, I feel, I mean, I feel like we should point out they spend like the, the first like twenty episodes of this cover like half a year. Like, there's a lot of downtime. She we wasn't don't that see. far along. Oh mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they were dating before the plane took off. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. She would have had the baby on the plane then. I don't know. But um, science. I also really liked Eric Vale as like the hot shot. Like it that was that was really fun. Could he be and, your uh, wingman any day? <laughs> <laughs> Eric Vale can be my wingman any day. No homo. <laughs> uh and uh Jeannie Torado as Ray, I I really liked it. She she had great, great chemistry with uh with Melda. It was great. All of them were great. I loved them. Excellent. Megan. Uh, okay, let's start with Mike and Eric, who... It was really funny, was when I when I first started watching the show, and Kato was on the screen a lot more, because he was kind of a big presence in the, the very beginning of the flight. 
uh, when they're first leaving Earth, and he's like, Hey, Kodai, if you do anything to get my men killed, I'm going to kill you. No questions asked. Do I make myself clear, asshole? <laughs> and Kodai's like, okay, and Ray's like, I don't want to be in accounting, I want to be a pilot. <laughs> and he's like, no, Ray. And Goose is like, hell yeah, Ray, I'm gonna hit on you. Basically, <laughs> their, whole, <laughs> basically their whole unit might as well be two guys, uh, two top guns and a girl. A little um, bit. Two bros chilling in uh, a hot tub. Well, Five no feet apart because they're not gay. <laughs> that is the second. Damn it, honey! <laughs> that is the second time I got to make that joke on the show. <laughs> Damn it, Ray. You know, all these jokes are making me really, really, you know, sad that on the beach episode, they didn't have a volleyball montage. Oh, I know. damn. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, Eric, Bell, oh, no, no, they did have the, they did have probably one of my favorite other Eric, like my two favorite moments with Eric Vale's character happen on, what is that episode? One's like the second to last episode when they're like, hey, we're heading back to Earth with the thing, the cosmic reverser. And I guess they're at, um... Uh, Mike's wedding to the nurse, and he tries to slide up by Ray and put his arm around her, and she just whacks <laughs> him. <laughs> she just punches him out, and he's like, "Oh!" But the other thing is, uh, so they're up on the top of the Yamato on the beach episode when they're swimming in the river in Iskandar, and uh, Melda just jumps off, and he gets to the edge. He's like, "I ain't doing it." And no, Ray Melda, just comes Mel, up and... Sh Melda's the no, one... No, no, Ray jumps in. Oh, okay. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm not doing it. And Melda's like, yeah, sure, bitch. And pushes him in. And just... He was he was the good wingman. He's kind of like... I guess, like... I don't hear get to hear a lot of, like, dude bro Eric Vale enough. Uh, Usually Eric Vale plays, like, the Bashonin or, like, you know, the deeply disturbed. You know, I just had a thought. You know, I have to do it. I have to do it. I just had a thought. Can I Can I interject real quick? Go ahead, because I'm going to make a joke that's very bad in about a minute. Oh, no. Brace for impact. He, oh, dear. His character looks like his character from Beck. You know, he does. Yeah. Yeah, he does. I just noticed Space that. Beck. Space Beck. And now for uh, Hardy's favorite thing that I always do when we talk about Eric Bale. Oh no. Oh no. Oh Mika boy, now we're in space <laughs> when no one can hear you scream. Amo, <laughs> 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 uh, please take the microphone away from this woman before she kills me. <laughs> sure. Ooh, let uh, me talk about the rest of the performances in this voice, then. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jeannie Tirado as Rey was an absolute delight. <laughs> she got a lot of the character's anger down, and you know I like that in a girl. Wait, Ferret, you like girls? <laughs> I'm Ferret fucking Bathroy! <laughs> I get whatever I want! I fuck anything that moves! <laughs> Actually, I don't, because technically the vampires are there for the end are all asexual. No, that is an actual thing. Oh, joy. Ooh, but where was I? I was talking... <coughs> Ooh, but where was I? Ooh, Justin Briner is that... <laughs> I fucked it up. <laughs> Ooh, Justin Cook is that slimy <laughs> shinito. Ooh, God, did I want to punch him in his squirmy little balls. <laughs> Oh, this is beautiful. He was such We're a having fun. <laughs> <laughs> he was such a treasure. I mean, whoever thought Yusuke Yurameshi could try to pull a coup and get his ass thrown in spirit jail? <laughs> and, <laughs> though, I was a little sad when he actually got shot and got a noble fucking death in front of Eurasia. Ooh, how I wish he would have burned in the pit of hell. And then there's... Space Deku. <laughs> Justin Bryder was an absolute treat as Toru Hoshina. I really got invested in his character arc. I mean, we were all rooting for him and the girl with the pigtails to make it through. They were kind of the couple I was most invested in. Is it, oh, this group of characters. <laughs> is it Space Deku or is it Space Mika? This boy has way too many emotions to be Space Michaela. Mm. 
my sweet Mika boy is a little bit more reserved and that's it. <laughs> and that's it. And this is for that just darling you, Chan. Though this one kind of looks like you and me got a baby. But that being said, but that being said, oh, Amon boy, take it from here. Sure. A dub tot I'm first, sorry. everybody. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, hey, audience. Hey, guys, not... what happened? I, I don't not... really remember the last five minutes. I feel like somebody took over my body. <laughs> oh, that would explain things. Guys, why do we have a really weird vampire locked in the navigation system? It's kind of freaking me out. Just don't ask questions. Don't, don't worry about it too much. <laughs> you sure about that? Well, it's like that time we had a ghost. It happens, you know. It's space. Mm -hmm. What happens in space stays in space. I can't believe I actually kept that. <laughs> this show's got every... I mean, look, we're already talking about the <laughs> the military show largely set on a space boat that found a way to have a beach episode. This show could do anything it wants. <laughs> what, was, what was the Mike Tool line? A beautifully animated show that has one gratuitous ass shot episode. Yep. Anyway, go on. I need to go get a drink really quick. Sure. Um, I also enjoyed this, this, uh, I enjoyed, I enjoyed these performances a lot. Um, I, I thought Microfro had a lot of fun playing Kato is just like kind of the really short tempered hothead who takes everything very, very seriously. Um, and he has a nice wedding at the end and it's just lovely. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun listening to him. I thought he, he was, he was very well suited to the character. Um, Eric Vale is a delight as playing just the coolest guy on the ship who does not succeed at anything. I'm going to hit on women, and it's not going to work. Well, I mean, nope. he did make it through the hole, but back. That's so, true. I mean, he didn't get with any women, but he still made it through the hole. So. Fair point. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. uh, Genie Toronto was also a delight. I, I, Ray was a lot of fun as a character. Um, I like like I like the way she played off with Melda a lot. I just I liked a lot of her uh, just sort of her her tough ambition of like yeah I'm, a, I'm gonna be I'm not gonna sit in accounting all day. I'm gonna be a fighter pilot. And I'm gonna be great. And you know what, Kodai? I'm gonna go over your head, and that's how I'm gonna do it. Because uh, like any good accountant, she knows how to work space politics. Uh, she was a lot of fun. I enjoy I enjoyed her character a lot. Um, I was also a big fan of Justin's. I, I'm a big fan of Justin Cook. Uh, 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 Yu Yu Hakusho is a very near and dear place in, place in my heart, and uh, Justin Cook's part of the reason why. So, frankly, at this point, especially since I feel like he doesn't act as much as he used to, it's just a delight to hear him in anything. Uh, so I, I was very happy to hear him here. He, he brought out a lot of Shinya's sort of just... Even, when he, even, when, even before anything goes bad, you can kind of tell Shinya's going to be up to no good. And I thought Justin did a very good job bringing, uh, bringing that to the forefront. He was a delight. And uh, I had a lot of fun just listening to Justin Byard play uh, Toru, who... Like I'm, I'm with Roots, I was really worried he was gonna actually die. <laughs> this is clearly yeah, so that... mad if he like like like, like this is this is clearly the kind of show where like yeah no you, we will kill off characters you enjoy. So I was actually legitimately worried. It's like oh god is he gonna he's gonna make it? I don't know if he's gonna make it. He might die. This is terrible. Oh no, I have so many feelings right now. Um, and I thought Justin I thought helped a lot about that and bringing uh, and just sort of playing this character who was both very talented but also you know he's having this kind of romance on the side that's very sweet and tentative and low-key and I, I enjoyed that part of it a lot too these were just a fine bunch of performances and uh, they, they did a lot to help solidify what i liked so much about this show in this dub uh but we have a lot more people to go so let's get going <laughs> next up we have uh, basically the the science crew and the medical crew uh, who do all these science and medically things on the Yamato. We have Lieutenant Karu Nimi, played by Michaela Krantz. We have uh, Analyzer Unit Zero, who's a robot, so I like him, and he's played by Sunny Strait. Uh, we have Dr. Uh, Sakezo Sado, who's played by Kenny Green, and Makoto Harada, uh, who is, of course, uh, Kato's love interest and eventual wife, and she is played by Felicia Angel. Uh, Hardy, would you like to start? Mm-hmm. Uh, once again, um, broken record. Everyone did a really great job. Um, stands out, standouts are uh, Nimi, who I honestly did not recognize as Michaela Krantz for the longest time until it was pointed out to me. Um, she's sort of like my second favorite waifu on the show, I, I would assume. Uh, she does have her moments of 
of treachery, but I mean, she at least makes up for it. So, um, I honestly did not. This is one of the few times this has happened when it comes to Analyzer. I did not realize that was Sunny Street. And now that I'm looking back on it, I'm actually very, very impressed because I did not know that was Sunny Street. It did not sound like any of the other roles that he has ever played. It sounded completely different. Granted, it was probably run through a like a filter in order to uh, deform the voice a bit. And uh, but yeah, it's now that I'm looking back on it, that's actually really impressive. He sort of because he doesn't sound human in the least bit. He's not supposed to, and I think he pulls that off really well. Um, as for Makoto, uh, she was very, very sweet, and I think that Felicia really brought out the sort of just innocent and, uh, innocence and, um, what's the word, uh, just, um, and not naivety, but just, just innocence and sweetness about her, but she was also very brave when she needs to be, uh, like when... When she goes with down to the planet with Susumu and uh, and Yuki, and she's like, "I'm a doctor. If there anyone, if anyone is injured, it's my obligation to to assist them." And um, I was really impressed with that. But let's let's get to the bottom here. <laughs> <laughs> doctor Sato is a treat, and Kitty Sato is the best character. <laughs> Dr. Sato is my favorite character in the he's, show. He's basically Same. me if I was a doctor. You know, just drunk <laughs> off his butt all the time. Doesn't give too great. He doesn't even put on his spacesuit when they launch. Um, yeah, he's just a hoot and a half. And, and Kenny Green just brings out that performance. Like, I, Kenny Green has this really, really amazing ability to play some of the just scummiest people. But then you play someone like Sato and he's just genuinely jovial and and you know just a, a genuinely sweet nice guy who loves his liquor and, uh, and yeah he's probably one of my favorite characters in the show definitely a standout performance from Kenny. indeed uh roots yeah great performances all around um i really liked sunny straight's analyzer because like characters where you're not allowed to emote i imagine are kind of hard to play and I think Sunny Street did a really good job with that. Uh, Felicia and Jill did a really good job as uh, Harada. Really, the character kind of blended into the background for a lot of the episodes she was in, so I really don't have too much to say on her. But I think I think Felicia and Jill did a really good job. Um, I really like Mimi's character arc. Because... It's not really until she's thrown in the brig that she start learning more about her history. And, uh... Mm. Like, it... It really brought a lot to the surface, and I, I really like Michaela Krantz's performance. And like Cardi, I didn't actually know it was her until, like, you had just said it. So, like, good on her. And, like... From a character design standpoint, like, the old men in Leiji Matsumoto works are just the best designed. Because they, <laughs> they get a lot of expressive animation. It, it It's great. And I really like Kenny Green as, as Sato. Because he, like, he's serious about his work, but he'll also get drunk and chew your ear off. And it... Like, his his interactions with the captain are also, like, a wonderful, a delight. I I loved all four of these characters. I like the performances. Great all round, guys. Good job. Superb. Uh, Megan? Uh, I want to save Dr. Sato for last. Like I said, he is my favorite character on the ship. Um, <laughs> Analyzer. I didn't know that was, like, I can literally say except for Dr. Sato. Uh, actually, no, even with Dr. Sato. Um, I didn't know who any of these people were played by until you gave me a cast list. Um, Nimi, oh man, Nimi, you were, some, at points I wanted to smack Nimi in her face. Like, Nimi, you, you treacherous hoe. Um, but no, she was a really sympathetic character. I think this is probably one of the oldest characters I think I've ever heard Michaela Krantz ever play. Like, I'm used to Michaela Krantz playing, like, some teenagers and little boys not a mature older female character so it was a really nice touch to see um 
her play uh, this older female character who is very sympathetic and some of her arc really, really, God, made me want to cry. Um, and I hope that she and... I know her first love was uh, Kodai's brother. But man, if she and Shiro didn't hook up by the end of that boat journey, <laughs> I'm going to be a little sad. Uh, Analyzer, Sunny Strait was great. Sunny Strait plays a lot of mascot characters. So having him play a robotic one where he doesn't have to beat Hi Mom... She's under the bed. Just leave her. I'll, if I have to let her out, I'll let her out. Good night. Okay. Um, so, hearing him play this kind of... Face it, Analyzer's kind of the mascot of, yeah. of the Yamato. More or less. More or le- It's either him or uh, Eurisha. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Analyzer was... He was great as Analyzer. And, um, I believe it's episode 8 is the Clockwork Prisoner episode. Mm-hmm. The other really shit-pantingly terrifying episode of Yamato. <laughs> where they, they capture a um, Gamelon cyborg and it um it kind of, like, becomes his friend and then is like, there's a goddess on the ship It asked me who I was and then you're sitting there dealing with robot ex- existentialism. But, uh... I think Chuck Huber was the other robot, so him, the two of them together were amazing. Um, it was just really, really great. Um, then moving on to Makoto, I love her Harda. Harda and and Dr. Sato were, like, the greatest buddies ever. They were this great comedic duo, and I, I can't believe, like, seriously, when did she and... What? I'm sorry, I've got to bring it up. When did she and Kato have time to bone? A lot of, like, da- of downtime on this space voyage. Yeah. I mean, like, where did they bone? She shares a room with, uh... Megan, Megan, Eurisha. Megan, there's a reason that it's a called a cockpit. <laughs> I was gonna go with the utility closet, but I like yours better. <laughs> He hit the eject button on something, but it wasn't the seat. <laughs> like, I fit. It's a weird thing to bring up, but seriously, like, no, she was she was in a bunk bed with uh, Pigtails McRadio DJ, and I'm pretty sure that Goose wanted to goose him a couple times. Um, and be sure as hell know that. You know what? I'm just gonna stop here. But no, Felicia, Angel, I couldn't believe it was her for a little bit. Uh, like. She was really adorable, and I was also going to be really mad if she died. Uh, but man, I'm so happy I'm watching a show where the Kenny Green character doesn't make me want to take a shower after. <laughs> man, I'm so happy. I'm used to that man being Dr. like Kareo Mato, father of my waifu. I would hate to have to introduce myself to him. Um, but man, he was such a joy. Like... Every scene that Dr. Sato was on was great. Uh, like when, in the coup episode, when he and M- uh, Makoto knock out the guys that try to uh, keep them hostage. <laughs> and he's just dancing around with the gun and the helmet on. <laughs> oh. But there's also, like, he also has this, like, really great sense, like, in his voice when he has to talk straight and some sympathy, too. Like, when he knows that, I think he's the one who finds, um... The captain at the very end, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just, like, he when he just knows that it's over for for him and, like, what happened, like, man. Mm -hmm. Like, good shit, man. Pour out a bottle of sake. Uh, That was my other favorite thing. He's like, screw screw this space stuff. I'm going to get drunk off my ass so I can have sake again. Like... I like how that's, like, one of his main motivators of going on the trip. It's like, he wants water to make sake again. But, yeah, good good on the, this group. Amon? Yeah, no, the, this, this, is another, this is another fine group of characters. Uh, I really liked what Michaela did with Mimi. Um, in large, in large part, just due to her arc is starting out as somebody who, like, ends up falling in with these people who think that this ridiculous mission may not be worth it. 
Uh, and then, you know, and then that goes south and she's feeling all this guilt about her role in it and then working her way back into feeling like one of the crew again. And I thought she just, she had a lot to, she had a lot to cover with this character and I thought she did an excellent job from start to finish. Uh, I also really enjoyed Sunny Strait playing the robot because I love robots. Mm -hmm. if, if you've met me, and there are two things I love, robots and skeletons. So naturally, I like the robot. Uh, if there was ever a show about a robot skeleton, Amon would be on it in a heartbeat. I mean, aren't those just... aren't those technically the hmm? the uh, the T one hundreds? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. There you go. Yeah. Um, was it? Uh, and and I like I liked I liked what Sonny did as being a like you know obviously he's a robot he can't emote too much but he can just just a little in there when they're when he's having like existential angst with the uh, uh, the Gam Gamelon robot and all that kind of stuff and. Yeah, I, I just really liked what he, what he was played in the role. He was a lot of fun to listen to. Um, Felicia was just a sweetheart. She was just was such a nice lady. She had such good repartee with Kenny Green. Uh, she they were, they were like a good pair together. Uh, she was also a delight to listen to. But of course, Kenny Green was great. <laughs> um, usually, usually when I watch like Star Trek, my favorite character, if he's on it, is whoever's playing um, Dr. McCoy at the time. So understandably, I am also very happy to listen to another surly Southern doctor <laughs> who has no time for your nonsense, but plenty of time to get drunk. Thank you. <laughs> uh, he was an absolute delight whenever he was on screen. I, I, ad I adored his performance. It was, it was, it's, it might be in my top five for the show, which is uh, no small feat given that this is a very good dub on the whole. Like I, Props to you. You were you were delighted to listen to Kenny. Uh, so I was very happy. I was very happy with them. But now we go on to our next set of characters, who are basically uh, people people from Iskandar, sort of. Both of them, as we'll kind see. Of. Kind of. They have some connection. Uh, we have we have a uh, start off, start us off. We have Queen Starsha Iskandar, uh, who's the queen of Iskandar, who is holding this MacGuffin the Yamato is trying to go get, and she's played by Monica Rial. We have uh, Princess Yorisha Iskandar, who has been hiding on the Yamato in the engine. She's Not, the GPS. She's the GPS. <laughs> using, they're using to get to Iskandar, <laughs> as her crew finds out about halfway through the story. It's been quite a bit of shock. Princess Garmin. <laughs> Pretty much. Turn and she left is played at Horsehead Nebula. <laughs> Recalculating. Recalculating. And, <laughs> 200 and light years. Make her right at the McDonald's. If you reach Andromeda, <laughs> you have gone too far. And you're no, we are not making a pit stop at Boogie's. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and Yuri Show is played by Mallory Rodek. Uh, we have uh, Officer y uh, Yuria Misaki, who uh, Yurisha spends quite a bit of time possessing before she comes out of the GPS unit. Um, and she is played by Sarah Wiedenheft. And last but not least, we have uh, the hero of the first episode. We have Lieutenant Commander Mamoru Kodai, who sacrifices himself to make sure that this whole plot can get set in motion. Except it turns out he survives and then later dies on Iskandar. <laughs> And may or and, may and not may have or, Starsha. Yeah, and may or may or may not have knocked up Starsha. We're not sure yet. Well, stay tuned for season two, folks. Uh, and he is played by Z. Charles Bolton. Uh, so, kids, uh, friends, what did we what do we think of these performances? Hardy? Uh, yeah, broken record once again. I think everyone did a good job. Um, standout performance for me probably was Sarah Wiedenheft because... She, for the large part of the show, she had to play not only Yuria as her own character, but also she at being possessed by Yurisha. And she kind of had to go back and forth between this peppy little radio DJ and this uh, very mystical, withdrawn... What, what's the right word? Um, very just... Un Regal, Regal yeah... Uh, but also kind of clueless princess doesn't know what is going on really and um and yeah that was probably of these four that was probably my favorite um Mamoru Kodai really doesn't stand out too much because he's dead in the first episode he doesn't really come back until until near the end really uh so I don't have too much to say on that um Starsha is your typical Monica Rial big girl voice role um I do, ha I do like how she's not about to take any of Dessler's crap. I like how she stands up to him. And uh, 
And I'm not going to say too much about Eurisha, uh, because I'm going to save it for later. So, But Eurisha is, is a delightful when she does wake up and, uh, and she gets to spend... She's sort of the OT3 along with Ray and Melda. And I just thought it was really cute seeing three different people from three different races uh, just hanging out and getting along. Become one lesbian family. <laughs> so, 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 Hardy, if, if Melda is Mystique mm -hmm. and Ray is Storm, would uh, Yersha be Emma Frost? Probably the closest resemblance, I'd say. Definitely. But she's a lot sweeter than Emma uh, is, so. Yeah, she Emma, Emma's Emma's way she's way too mean. She's not mean enough to be Emma, really. Mm -hmm. Starsha, meanwhile. Yeah. <laughs> no, Starsha's <laughs> definitely Emma Frost. Starsha will cut right, her right, Starsha, right down, Starsha, right, Starsha. right, right, right down to showing off her rack all the time. Yeah. Oh god, I, I took a drink at the wrong time. I'm sorry, Megan. But that's all I gotta say. Excellent roots. Yeah, I really don't have much to say about uh, Starsha or Mamaru because they really, they really don't get a lot of lines until like near the end of the show, but. When they do get to speak, they were generally good. Um, I really like the, the naivete of Eurisha. And um, I guess, really, this section, the focus is on Sarah Wiedenheft as Yuria. Because, um, yeah, she basically had to play two characters, sometimes flip-flopping between them, like, during a line. Which is really impressive. And... Megan was impressed with uh, with Analyzer in the uh, the robot episode, but I really liked uh, the the story Sarah Wiedenhef read during that <clears throat> during that whole episode with the uh, with the Watchtower on Mars. That was mm. that was really eerie, and it really helped to set the atmosphere. So yeah, real good, real real good. Uh, Megan. Yeah. I'm sorry if you hear a meowing noise. Somebody has demanded that I pet her right now. That's all right. I, I have a needy cat. I understand. Hi, Shinya. You're a good Shinya, not the bad Justin Cook Shinya. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you wouldn't uh, betray us, right, Shinya? Right? You betray your mother on Meowther's Day, would you? <laughs> you wouldn't betray me on Meowther's Day, right? You love me? I love you. No. Back on the dead. Go back on the bed now. Uh, so, woo, I have, uh, I'm not gonna do the possession gag, even though this would be the perfect <laughs> time to do it. And I, I, the more I do it, the more I have a chance of murdering Hardy, and we don't want that. <laughs> Thanks for your consideration. Though it, <laughs> man, it was so nice to see Space Clovis. Space Clovis. Hi, Charles Bolton. Sp Everybody, put your hands up. This spaceship is gonna blow up. <laughs> oh no. Uh, one thing I would like to point out with, with uh, Mamoru Kodai is um, one of the really nice touches I liked about this dub was that um, any of the like anthems or battle songs sung by the sailors, uh, they did dub in this show. Mm. And this is one of the rare examples where I actually prefer it. Um, th it was a very nice touch to have Z. Charles Bolton do it. And his final message to his brother was great. Uh, Queen, Queen Starsha, Starsha, Starsha. <laughs> um, crystalline bitch. Uh, last of her kind. Man, like, I really like Monica getting to use her big girl voice. Um, I am convinced that she and Space Clovis boned. Um, uh, Eurasia, she was really great when she was out. Miley Rodick was really great as Eurasia outside of possessing Sarah Wiedenhaft. She made Eurisha adorable. Eurisha is my best girl in the show. I love Eurisha. She is the cutest fucking thing on Earth. Or in the galaxy. Like, her and Melda and, and Ray, OT3. Uh, why have an OTP when you can have an OT3, guys? Uh, but I really want to save more, like, Hardy for talking about her later. Uh, but, man. Showa, Rakugo, Sarah, we didn't have here. Was the best. I loved her character. I loved her. I loved the performance. Um, I like that you get to see Sarah Wheaton have play kind of a younger character, but she's also not like a total space chihuahua. Uh, like I like that she she was younger, but she wasn't like the ruby type or uh 
Toot Toot from Taboo Tattoo. <laughs> um, I think she did a fantastic job differentiating from Eurisha and uh, Yuria and uh, Eurisha. Um, I bet she's named Yuria because it sounds like Eurisha and it's like kind of a uh, like a doppelganger thing. Um, but I really like the touches that they had with her also getting to play the DJ of the ship. Um, and I really, uh, that performance that she does do of the, um, the lighthouse story on Mars was fantastic because she did, she got to just play it very emotionally without the, um, limitations of lip flops. So Sarah Wiedenhoff was fantastic. All of these actors were, um, yeah, go ahead. I'm on. You know, I, I agree. This is, this is a very strong set of performances. Uh, I liked what, um, Bolton was doing with Kodai, even though Kodai is not on screen all that often. Uh, I also like the, I like the bit at the end of the first episode where he like leads a sing along as him and his men, or let's go off to their doom, with the but with the knowledge that like you know we will die, but we will our our like our planet will survive because of what we're doing today. It was it was a nice moment. He uh, he 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 got to pull it out when um when he when he needed to, and I like that. Um, Monica was good as Starsha, who's pretty mean, but like you know hey she keeps saying no to Dexler, so she at least she's at least got a good head on her shoulders, so. Props to her, and uh, Monica was a lot of fun uh, to listen to playing that. Uh, Mallory was a lot of... I, I really liked what you play with them. Eurisha, somebody who was, like, you know... You know, kind, but a little, and a little naive, but, like, war, you know, she warms up to people, and it was really fun playing, hearing her play off of uh, Melda and Ray, and uh, she was... You know, she was just a delight to listen to. But like, like, like you guys, I feel like Sarah was the big standout in this group. Both for, you know, she has, she has to play her own character, she has to play another character possessing her own character. Um, I like seeing Sarah and stuff, because I was introduced to her in one of the worst shows I've seen, so it's always nice to see her in something good. Uh, what was that? Show, show Me Sample. Oh. It's a bad show. Don't watch it, kids. Um, uh, and I, 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 really, I also really enjoyed the radio. I mean, look. When when they came when I was revealed that there's like radio drama on these spaceships, I was like, I want a twenty five series spin off that's just what radio drama is like on the Amato. <laughs> Please give it to me. But she was really great. Like she I thought she really got to do she she really got to just do a lot of great voice work narrating this story and it was it was really good and wonderful and it was, uh, that that little whole little bit was probably one of the highlights of the show for me. So I'm I'm A plus for that. Uh and now we go on. I mean, now we go on to our final group. Uh, basically, the 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 majority of the bridge crew for the Yamato. Uh, we have Lieutenant Daisuke Shima, who is played by Riko Fajardo. We have uh, Ensign Kin Kinjiro Ota, who is played by John Bergmeier. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Shiro Sanada, uh, played by Phil Parsons. Yasuo Nanbu, who is played by Stephen Fu, and uh, Yoshikazu Aihara, who is played by Aaron Roberts. Uh, Hardy, would you like to start us off? Sure. Once again, broken record. Everyone just did a really great job. Um, standouts for me would definitely be Shima. He just, if we weren't, if we weren't so stretched for time, he'd probably be one of the ones who got his own spot because he is sort yeah. of like yeah. The, the second banana like if, of, of he's sort of like Kodai's second banana. Um, yeah, if we if we either had more time or like more t more time, or he was in the show just a little bit more, he'd basically be one of the leads. So yeah, uh, I like how Rico plays his sort of Spitfire personality um, because it did make me want to punch Shima so hard in a few episodes. Like, dude, what are you doing? Punching? Yes, yes, I yeah. agree. But uh, but yeah, and uh, also Phil Parsons plays a very deadpan general very well um i mean shiro sanada is not really the emotional type and i think that phil's voice really does sort of lend itself very well to um this sort of no nonsense get the job done character and uh he has his moments of emotional parts too but uh and i don't want to spoil anything because i'm pretty sure megan wants to talk about it but yeah uh those two were the standouts as for um, as for Stephen Fu and Eric Roberts and even John Bergmeier, their characters just really didn't have much of an impact. They were sort of just the extras on the bridge. Um, but ev again, everyone played their parts really, really well. Uh, Roots. Yeah, I, I largely have to agree with Hardy on um, Ihara, Nambu, and uh, Oda. Because um, they, they really didn't get to do much on the bridge. 
Uh, also, I, I kind of wanted to give a shout out to, I believe it's Danny Chambers, who's another one of the bridge crew. I, I thought she did a really good job. Um, uh, Shima. I really liked his character arc, especially during the coup, when he's sort of kind of coming to grips that humanity may not be entirely innocent in the, uh, in the whole Gamala War thing. But, um... He's also conflicted about what humanity ought to do. So he ends up joining the coup, and then he ends up feeling really bad about it later. Yeah. He, I, I really he, like that story arc. He also fell for Nimi's honey trap, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil Parsons as uh, Sonida. I, I really like that he was sort of... I guess you could call him the Spock of the Yamato. Yeah. Because he, he's largely... He's, he largely doesn't express much in the way of emotion, but he's he's also responsible for a lot of the big decisions on the ship. Especially when in those periods of time when, when the captain falls ill. Like, I, I really... Yeah, the... I I really liked him as the as the character and there is a little bit I kind of wanted to go off on but um Megan's probably going to take care of that so I will pass it on to her. Man, I was going to be so fucking pissed if Phil Parsons died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like I was going to throw my PS4 controller at my television. I got so mad in that episode cuz it's like you find out his bat also be like Shinya is crying to get out but the second I get up she's gonna run to the bed and not want to leave my room <laughs> sorry cat you're just... I'm not trapped in here with you you're trapped in here with me daughter <laughs> happy mother's day everybody <laughs> but no man like fucking hell man I was so mad during that episode because Yuri and Kodai and him go to set up open up the big space hole um I'm trying really hard not to make your mama jokes. <laughs> um, and then you get his backstory with the brother and you realize that they read Chuya Nakahara poems. Funny, in a show that they talk about Chuya Nakahara and there's a lot of zero gravity going on. Oh. Um, all, thank you to all five of you who get that joke from Boon Go Stray Dogs. Um, but man, Phil Parsons was great in this. I'm used to him being like Klaus and Nappa. And Yomu. This is space Yomu! <laughs> He's Yomu from Tokyo Ghoul, but in space. <laughs> That's why I liked it a lot. I I loved him. I was like, man, Sh Shiro doesn't show a lot of emotions, but he's this very big, noble, like, good dude. He's not as overt as Klaus, but he's, like, good dude, and you can get that through his voice, and you get really invested in him. And I was so mad that the show faked out his death, like a majority of things it does in this show. It's like, I was in the water the whole time. <laughs> I use science, science to not die. Hey, kids, you gonna set off an intergalactic EMP? Jump in the pool, you'll be fine. <laughs> um, did, uh, did he? Go ahead. Is this basically the space battleship Yamato equivalent of jumping into the fridge to dodge the nuke? I, th oh I, th I think I think the si I think the science is a little more sound, but kind of yeah. You know, I have I know I know a lot of people might get a little bit annoyed that I'm making this reference. Indiana Jones, that's not a fantasy character. Look here, that man survived a nuclear explosion in a fridge. If that's not a fantasy, I don't know what is. <laughs> if you know what that's... Ref uh, I'll tell you guys what it's a reference from at the end after the recording, but those of you who have seen it, you'll know what it's from. Mm. Uh, John Bergmeier was good as Ota. Ota doesn't really have a thing. Uh, Stephen Fu was... God, Stephen Fu needed to get smacked in the face a couple times <laughs> in this show. Wasn't he the one who just... I want to find... He's just like he's really horny the for wave, the the, the giant wave motion gun. gun yeah. I, by the way, we're at like, yeah, we're at like an hour and a half, and this is the first time we're mentioning the wave motion gun. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. By, by the by, for reasons by the way, the show, the there's Yamato a giant a... gun built in the middle of the ship that they blow things up with. 
And at one point, they literally do a fuck the police with it. <laughs> <laughs> like, they legitimately, they're like, wait for it, turn the boat around! Fire! <laughs> See ya, bitches! And go through the other end of the space hole. And then they shoot Ooh. a building through another building. A building. <laughs> Like it, it, like this and they is great. Blew, and they nuked an island. The one, the only time I will say that the wave motion gun being used was bad is when they killed the space cat on Aww. Jupiter. How dare you, Yamato? The cat didn't fucking deserve it. But man, Stephen Fu is horny for that gun. <laughs> um, like he's like the gun otaku put on the boat. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, I genuinely like when Stephen Fu gets to be in a lot of things, and I'm happy that he's kind of working his way up in Funimation. I think he's probably one of their uh, great new actors that they have uh, running around there. Uh, fun fact, Aaron Roberts was the only person I could tell who was on the bridge <laughs> by name. I was like, oh, hey, there's the Aaron Roberts character. <laughs> I would like to thank the multiple times I have watched Token Rambu Hanamaru for this moment. I have listened to enough of Aaron Roberts' screeching mother voice to understand this. <sighs> uh, but no, Ihara was great. I felt really bad for him at the end. Because I think it was it him or Nobu who finds out that his parent, one of his parents died. Uh like when they finally get back in range of Earth, they I, I they think I think I think that's Ihara, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, Ihara. Yeah, fight, I like I yellow. felt really bad for him. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then there's Space Daryun. Oh, here it comes. Oh, I'm, ta Shima. I'm taking out the headphones. Daryun. Okay. Do you want no, me to really no, you do don't one? Have to. You don't have to. <laughs> Hardy's like, God, no, thank you. <laughs> Holy shit! In space, no one can hear you, yeah. Daryun. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think Shima really gets to be uh, connected to Daryun because he's kind of yeah. Shima's a little bit. Shima had a couple moments where I wanted to shoot him out of the gun. <laughs> oh, the part where where they where him and Kodai fight and Oji just like, okay, you two assholes, clean the entire boat. And he's just like, fucking really. But no, Shima was great. I think um, I like getting to hear Riko kind of play these characters. It kind of reminded me not of Daryun, but of uh, Haruhiro, Haruhito from Grimgar. Hmm. They were kind of very much in that same range. And I love the shit out of him in Grimgar. That was to date probably one of his best performances. Um, I really like that he kind of redeems himself by the end. I do feel like he kind of gets relegated to the side kind of in the end when they, I feel like the show set him up as like one of the bigger characters, but all in all good performances. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I'm largely in agreement. I'm, I'm going to get in agreement. This is a, this is a good set of characters. Um, I, uh, I agree. Like, um, Oda and, uh, Ihara didn't get to do too much, but I do think, um, Aaron and John did a good job, like giving the characters what they needed for the show. Um, uh, Stephen Fu is kind of fun as Nanbu just being kind of obnoxious and a little full of himself. And he, he's the one who spends a good chunk of the show mooning over Mori, right? Yes. And it's like, it's not gonna happen, dude. Like, stop. Don't make a fool of yourself. Um, I also, I really enjoyed what Rico brought to uh, the performance for Shima. I, I particularly like the part where he's talking to um, Robert McCollum's character and kind of learning that, like, this thing that has been the foundation of my entire investment in this fight is probably bullshit, and I don't know how to take that. I need, I need to. My dad died for a like life. my my fa my father died for nothing, and now I have to now I have to deal with that. Great, um, and I thought and then he just he, he just played that very well as like just the arc this character has to go through of like reconciling what he used to think and what he what what is now the truth in front of him what he has to do. Um, like all of them, I thought Phil Parsons was a real standout here. He was just I just liked him as Sonata. He was just very amusingly like blunt and forward, and I was very mad that he might die because I liked him. And they give him a sad backstory, and it's like, don't you do this? Don't you do this show? <laughs> don't do this to me. Don't. Uh, but they didn't because they're jerks like that. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I I enjoy these performances a lot. 
And with that, we are now we are now out of our groups. We are on to uh, what I would consider like the four big leads of the show. And oh and, uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, are we starting off with a doozy? First up, we have the, we have the one, the only, the big blue baddie himself, Albert Dessler. <laughs> A.K.A. Blue Space Hitler, if you couldn't guess. Uh, he is played by Chris Rager, and he is he's just awful. <laughs> just the worst. Jesus Christ. All to impress a girl who doesn't like him. Good God. You know, think of it this way. He, he has very similar motivations to comic book Thanos. Yeah. Oh, Christ, you're right. Yeah. Fuck. Thanos in the Good comic book. Good observation there, Hardy. Yeah, Thanos in the comic book, his motivation was to wipe out half of existence so that he could earn the affections of Lady Death. And she never gave him the time of day. She wouldn't even speak to him directly. She used like a um like a uh, a, a a a medium or a, no, a uh, a familiar. Um mm -hmm. Dessler's entire deal is he wants to Unite the entire universe under his rule so that Starsha will love him. Because he believes that peace can only be achieved if he if he has enslaved the entire universe. And he just can't get it through his skull, his big blue smug looking skull, that Starsha just straight up don't like him. He's doing all of this. That's his entire motivation. He's doing all of this for a booty call basically and as much <laughs> as much as he is an awful awful person he is a great villain oh he's the best he's, oh yeah he's the best like at being any, the worst he's the best at being the worst any 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 villain who has a button built into their throne to just drop annoying people he has down a, a hole out door. their chamber like he's got a trap door it's the most 70s look, look. To the shadow realm look, with look, you. Look, I'm alive, Desler, Desler, but I'm very Desler. badly burned. <laughs> De Desler is objectively terrible as a as a as a person, but the minute that happened, it was like, I am here for this. <laughs> you are great. Please continue being the worst. Oh good. Damn it, damn it, Ruth. Oh good. You sent somebody to help me. <laughs> oh god. You shot me! <laughs> Why did you shoot me? <laughs> no, as he says, I'm alive, but I'm very slightly burned. I had a thing of water in my mouth, and I just had to spit it out. And I'm choking. Are I'm you okay? Sorry. <laughs> but anyways. Roots of Justice attempted to murder his girlfriend on air. I saw we... <laughs> Ooh, I made a fucky mucky. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Anyway. Already yes. Anyway, I, would you would you like to start us off? Okay, I know. Did we already did we already say who played yes. Matt today, Space Hitler? Yeah, Chris Chris Rager. Yeah. Okay. 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 I have been a broken record throughout this entire review so far. I will finally get to have some words. Yay. Because my God, do I love this performance. I wish I had known about this during the Dubbies last year because, man, Chris Rager has never... I used to complain that Chris Rager got cast in roles he didn't belong in. Like, I was very iffy on Asano when uh, when Assassination Classroom came out, and, and I still think that he was very badly miscast in Ms. Mikagura School Suite. Um, because... But hearing him as Dessler, there is one word I have never described Chris Rager's performance as until now. Oh boy, here it comes. It's sensual. <laughs> you know. Turn it up. Yeah. And I know as a straight heterosexual male, I have never heard Chris Rager sounding sexy. He makes. He turns Destler into sexy blue space Hitler, and I don't know how to feel about that. Um, but yeah, it's just no. He just nails this performance right off the way. It's perfectly balanced. It is hammy. It is it is sensuous. It is like you want 
to believe what Destler is saying, even though he's doing these to terrible, horrible things. Crimes against humanity. It's, it's like the, the voice just reaches out to you and you're like, yes, I will follow you to the ends of the earth. And, um, and man, he just, he just nails it. I'm just, a, he's my favorite voice in the entire dub. Honestly. Not gonna lie. That's, that's all I have to say. I hear that. Uh, Roots? Yeah, like, he is just dripping with charisma. And, like, there isn't the slightest hint of slime to the, to his performance either. Like, it is, like, you can tell that Dessler genuinely believes the things that he is, he's spewing out. And, like, Chris Rager's voice lends a lot to that lends a lot to that and and his performance it's just yeah I, I have to agree with Hardy like sensual and suave is not typically something I associate with the guy who plays Mr. Satan in Dragon Ball so the like this was a treat I I really enjoyed this it, it's probably like it is probably my favorite performance, like of the of. Uh, I I can't really say of last year because I I didn't end up giving him the dubby, but it it was definitely like one of my per favorite performances of his, and one of my favorite performances of the year. Excellent, uh, Megan. I'm about to throw somebody under the bus. Uh oh, <laughs> oh boy. Uh oh. Uh, I've got to find the exact wording of this. So, if you don't know, uh, at least Classy and I kind of troll around there sometimes. Uh, but we also hang out on the R Anime Dubs Discord. Mm -hmm. Get her, Dragon! It's time for you to get thrown under the bus. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh no. When we were, we and him were, he and I were talking about, um, Yamato one night. Uh, one day while I was watching it, and he goes, Man, a lot of this cast doesn't stand out to me, except for one. Damn it, Chris Rager, you're making me feel things. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we were talking, and I was just like, You know what? Like, I think this man has a boner for Chris, <laughs> Chris Rager in this show. <laughs> Oh god! Like, oh man, I can't find the exact thing, but I was laughing really hard about uh, about Getter being in uh, having a thing for uh, Chris. Chris oh, there, we, I think I found it. Oh, uh, buddy, Tesla's one of the most handsome men in the sci-fi genre, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, dude, no, you have a boner, Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid spec, stupid sexy space. <laughs> Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> Starsha, I'm wearing nothing at all. Oh, uh, no, but man, he was so good in this. Like, I liked Chris Rager as Principal Asano in Assassin's Classroom. I, I generally, like, I, like, I actually have a harder time, like, because I'm not a Dragon Ball Z person at all. Like, I don't like the show. I, I've i had a lot of bad experiences with fans of the show. Um, But, like, every so often I'll be home for Toonami and I'll just, like, watch it before I put on, like, whatever's on at 1130. Whether it be, like, Black Clover, or, like, My Hero, or, like, now it's My Hero. So I actually have a harder time going from stuff like this to hearing him as Mr. Satan. I actually have the opposite problem. I like him more doing this stuff, and... Yeah. God damn, is he so good as Dressler? Like, he's suave, he's sexy, he's manipulative. Like, you would totally, like, if you were, like, he plays the entire galaxy and he's just so good at it. And I love, um, I love that he played the way he plays this character. And I think that he does such a fantastic job because I think so many people have such an expectation of him as an actor. Like, I think so many people who 
are like casual fans and maybe have heard of Dragon Ball would sit and watch um, Yamato, they'd be like, wait, this is Mr. Satan? Like, that big doofy dumbass? And just goddamn, like, I want to see Chris Rager play more characters like this. If he's given the same direction that Jerry gave him, dude would knock it out of the park as a lot of villains. Mm. And this is no exception. So, one of the best performances in the show, and what if this show hadn't started in November, I think, of last year, and is out of W contention, he would easily have, like, best in a drama mm. at this point. Like, he's that good. Amon? Uh, I'm in full agreement. Chris knocks this one out of the park. Um, he is just so... Like, he's, like, smooth and charismatic and just awful. But, like, you to you totally buy why, like, he's got... He, he is so clearly the dude who would ha happily, like, drop a space station on the capital of his home planet just to get his way. But you totally buy why everyone has been following him up to this point. He's just so wonderfully terrible. Like, Chris, Chris is great. I agree. Like, I, I hope Chris Rager gets more chances to play characters like this in the future because he does a phenomenal job here. Um, I'm actually a little frustrated because, as we noted, um, Yamato was uh, qualified for the W's last year, but I think since only about four episodes came out before December, I'm not sure we even got to his performance by that time. Which is frustrating for me because I definitely want I would definitely give it in my my award last year for like best in a drama or something if uh, I had seen it then. Uh, he is fantastic and definitely one of the uh, highlights of the show for me. Uh, but now now that we're done talking about Space Hitler, let's talk about some good people who we actually like, shall we? Oh yes! yeah! Oh boy! So next up Captain we have. Captain. We have we have we have the one the only the Admiral of the Yamato herself. We have one Juzo Okita played by Brian Mathis, the noble heart and oh, soul. Oh, Admiral shit. Bone Daddy! <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> but you it didn't prepare you at all. <laughs> what do we think of Brian Mathis's performance as our favorite captain? Uh, Hardy, would you like to start? Yes, I would. Um, he, I love his bombastic quality. Like he has so many great speeches in this show that, uh, and he just he's sort of like the opposite of, of someone like Desler, whereas Desler just oozes charisma and is just sort of you know um, very manipulative. Okita has no problem telling it like it is. He just comes out and says it, you know, and he just. He, it, it, I love just the, the honesty and the straightforwardness that Brian gives him. Um, he's probably one of my favorite characters in the show just because he's like this, the, he's like the typical noble, do the right thing, no matter the cost sort of guy. And, uh, and it's a very, it's a very different sort of take on other characters that Brian has played. Like, Especially Elias, whereas Elias, Elias was very naive and, and just sort of childlike. Uh, Brian, uh, or Okita, is just completely the exact opposite. He is very mature, level-headed, and he's not afraid to get stuff done. And so, yeah, that's uh, I think he did a fairly good job. He might be a little, if I had any criticism, he might be a little bit flat. If I don't think that's the right word. Um, where it does sort of sound like at times he's just reading his lines, but it's that would be my own real any criticism. I like the energy behind it. All right, uh, Roots. Uh, truth be told, uh, Brian Mathis's Okita took a little bit of time to grow on me, but um, I, I do like how earnest he plays the character. Like, when you start getting into the backstory of him and the whole situation that led to the Gamala War. Like, you start to feel for him, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to trying to think of the, the point in time in which his voice as, as Okita clicked for me. But there was a very clear moment where I'm just like, okay, you know what? This works. Uh, it was fairly early on. I, I think it was like as they were starting to warp away from Earth for the first time. Like, there was a speech he gave, 
Was it at the li- the line crossing? That might have been it. Where he, he gives a speech and then I just started feeling the feeling his voice as a character and I ended up really liking it by the end. Uh, especially the uh, the interaction between him and Tatum's character as uh, as Tatum's character is on the verge of uh, blowing his ship up and damaging the Yamato. Like that was that that put a tear in my eye. So so good on you, Brian Mathis. I I really liked it. It's a it's a shame that he's probably not gonna have like much, if anything, to do when twenty two oh two because I think he's like the soul of the ship now. So I hope he shows up. I mean, we do. We already have ghosts in this show as it is. Like that wouldn't be, <laughs> wouldn't be too out yeah, there. Ghosts in the ship. Yeah, ghosts in the ship. Like at the end of the show, he he ends up becoming the the like the soul of the ship, like Kodai and. Uh, What's her name ended up being? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Megan? Man, I'll follow you into battle any day, Admiral Bone Daddy. <laughs> oh. Could be my wingman anytime. But no, man, like, dude, like, it's hard to put into words what I like about uh, Brian Mathis' Okita. Because at times, if you're not really, like, I feel like if you weren't somebody who was, like, super into anime dubs, you would hate this performance. It can come off as very flat and very, very, like, kind of, oh no, something's going on, and very Spockish. But I feel like, as a character, Okita kind of is holding a lot of things to his chest because he's hiding the fact that he's basically dying the entire boat ride. Yeah. Yeah. Outside of a couple of people, and yet he's still such a good man and tactician. Uh, I like when he's, like, nuts. <laughs> which is apparently, like, a really old gag from, like, the old 70s show, which I was not even a thought. Oh, oh no, oh, no, it's even better. That's a real thing that happened. In, like, real Japanese... No, that that's an actual thing that happened during World War II. Oh, neat. Yeah. Um, But, like, there's a lot of... It's just such a... It's like Hardy said. It's, like, where Elias is naive and older-sounding... Okita is older sounding because he's already seen so much shit. Mm. Um, and I felt for him in those last couple arcs where he was just like dying and slowly like losing himself and how he gives himself over to be the ship because the spirit of uh, Mamoru Kodai wanted to watch his little wanted to help his little brother get laid. <laughs> um, <laughs> what a good brother. It's like, hey, I know I'm supposed to revive the Earth, but man, my brother's sad because his girlfriend's dead. Why don't I uh, fix this for you? Best wingman um, of the show. Yep. Be my- Good job, Kodai. Good job, older Kodai. Like, okay, I hate to derail this, and you can cut it out if you want. Have you guys ever seen the video from... It's a clip of JoJo's Part 4. Where um, oh, yeah. Josuke opens it, and it's the the kind of goon-looking friend. Okiyasu. And it's like, Okiyasu, and he's like, hey! And he comes in the house, and and the mom is like, oh, are you one of, uh, are you one of Koda, are you one of Josuke's friends? And then, he, like, they introduce himself, and then he leans over and goes, dude, your mom is hot. <laughs> and it starts playing He Lives in You from The Lion King, and Kakuin, like, <laughs> fades in from the side. <laughs> He lives in you. He lives like, in me. That's what I. That's what I imagine. Like, that's what I'm imagining when God I admit, makes the thing go off. He lives in you. And then Okita lives in the ship to revive the Earth to make it blue because he's got all of the memories of Earth when it was in the ship. But uh, no, I thought Brian Mathis was fantastic. Um. I would probably prefer his Elias performance a little bit over uh, Okita, but they're both really good performances, so it's like, oh no, I could have chocolate instead of vanilla. Yeah. <laughs> Mama? Uh, yeah, no, I thought I thought Brian did really well here. Like, like, like Juzo, Juzo, uh, Okita is just so much like kind of quiet dignity to him about like you know his role as the admiral and the guilt he feels over. You know, on, on some level, being part of what started this pointless war, they're still kind of entrenched in. And just, you know, he, he's dying, but he wants to see this through to the end. And I thought Brian just did such a wonderful job bringing that out. But not, not like 
super overtly necessarily. Like, it felt very measured and subtle in a lot of ways. And I really like that. I thought he he felt just so well cast in this role. And he, I thought he just brought everything that you needed the needed for it. Just, you know, like, I, you like Okita. He's a good dude. He's the best dude. <laughs> he gives himself up so that humanity may survive. Which is an ongoing theme in this show, and like now that I think about it, but uh, yeah, no, he, I just really liked him. He was just, he was really, he was really good in a way that I find kind of hard to like talk about, just because there's not, 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 there's not anything that obviously showy to point to. It's just good, uh, because that I, I will stop there. Mm-hmm. And now let us go, let us go on to the female lead of this show, the center of many, of more than a few of the gratuitous ass shots we mentioned earlier. <laughs> I speak, of course. <laughs> Including, including the most gratuitous one where um, she, uh, uh, Kodai's sitting in a, he's sitting in the cockpit of a ship and uh, she climbs up the ladder to go talk to him and she just sort of swings around to sit down. And right after she did that, uh, Kodai just kind of blinks. <laughs> well, do you blame him? It's a, no. Kodai is, Kodai is the slow poke of love. <laughs> Gotta get him that King's Rock, oh. then he'll level up into slow... Slow king. Anyways, we have we have Yuki Mori, uh, who is a, who is um, an amnesiac uh, on, on here who uh, spends part of the show thinking, "Am I an alien? Because <laughs> there's a real chance I'm an alien, and I don't know how to feel about that." Uh, and she is played by Mallory Rodak. Uh, and uh, what, what do we think of uh, Mallory Rodak in this role, Hardy? Just wanted to point this out. If uh, mm-hmm. if that name sounds familiar to you. It's because we've mentioned it earlier in the episode for Eurisha, and there's a reason for that. We don't want to give too many spoilers away, but yes, Mallory plays both roles. And uh, anyways, my personal thoughts on it. When Mallory first started as an actress, I believe one of her first roles was in a certain magical index. And to be fair, Fair, I at the time I was not impressed. Um, and then later on, she would show up in other other shows such as Showman Sample, which and don't watch that, and uh, <laughs> and also Izetta the Last Witch. Don't yeah. watch that. And while they were bad. Watch our episode on it instead, because yeah. it's funnier. Mm-hmm. And I could notice improvement on both of those roles, but I still wasn't 100%. Listening to her as Maury has shown some incredible growth uh, for her as an actress, and I honestly think this is probably her best performance to date. Um, yeah, I, I think she's really come a long way. So... Excellent. Uh, Roots. Yeah, so in comparison with... Um, I'm sorry, I'm pulling up the name. Uh, Yurisha. Uh, Yuki kind of blends into the background a little more for me. Like, she she shows up a lot more in the show, but, like, there's... I, I don't know. I, I like the performance, but they're just... I don't know if the show knew what it wanted to do with the character when starting out. And, um, I, I don't know. I, like I said, the performance is really good, but I think the issues I have are more with the show and like what it was trying, what it probably wanted to do in the beginning versus what ended up happening. She kind of gets relegated to love interest. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. But yeah, uh, Mallory Rodak did a really good job. Excellent. Uh, Megan? Yeah, no, I feel really weird because, like, the two things I super know Mallory Rodak in that I've watched are, like, she's Apricot and Neto J. Oh, yeah. And she's in Izetta. And the, and the more, and the least, and the less I remember about Izetta and Neto J, the better. <laughs> <laughs> This is revenge for making me choke, honey. <laughs> Fair. Ah, uh, the adventures of Megan and Roots <laughs> flirting with each other on the internet. I, I would tell the story about what happened on our first date, but we'd be here for a while. Um, yeah, maybe maybe in another <laughs> episode. No, Mallory, Mallory Rodick was was a lot of was actually really great in this, and I like how you could tell Yuki and Eurasia. Yeah. Apart. 
And there is actually a scene where the two of them are together talking to each other. And it is very, very surreal. And Molly was like, I've never done this before. <laughs> On her Twitter. Um, I do like that she is a little bit more stern in the beginning. And she slowly starts opening up to Oki- to uh, okay. Kodai. Not Okita. Okita knows her. But um, I do wish that she kind of didn't become the love interest. And your like, Eurasia became like such a more interesting character than she did at the end. I was kind of sad, though, when she got put into a space coma. Yeah. Um, mm. But she came back, and obviously everyone got their big space operas happy endings um, in more ways than one. Until the um, ship probably she... got wrecked again in 2202. Yep. Uh, but no, I really like Yuki Mori. Uh, I really like this performance. It's a, it's. I would say out of the main four, it's only because I think the character her, itself kind of hinders in the sense that it starts out in one way and ends up in another and uh, I, I'm with Roots and I'm a little bit torn on it, but I also really, really like it. And it's very, very hard to criticize this. This is probably my favorite Mallory Rodick performance that there is um, out right now, besides another one I can't talk about. So, uh, good on you. And I really hope that she gets to play more characters like this, too, instead of, like, in bad fan service shows. <laughs> We can only hope. Uh, and I also hope, because I also enjoyed Mallory in this role. Uh, you, you mentioned some of the like, funniness of how Maury's written in the show. But I thought Mallory played... I thought she still played the character very well. I liked... Oh, yeah. I like. I, 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 th- I thought she was very good with what she was given. I liked I liked the way she played off a lot of the characters. I liked her frust- continued frustration with Kodai for one reason or another. Oh, she's stuck it's with this man. and he's So, so dumb. He is he is very good at certain things, just not that one. Um, and I, like I, I thought she brought a lot of like I, I like the sternness she had in the beginning. I liked that she warmed up to people. I liked um, is what you know going watching her go through this arc where she has to deal with like I I'm not even sure what my identity is anymore and dealing with that and. Yeah, I and just and you know for that matter, I mean, like fake being someone she's not for a while, even though she's pretty sure it's like okay, I am now, I am who I am now, but I'm involved in a ploy, and I have to go through this and try not to die because I'm on a prison planet now, and this might end badly. Yes, uh, prison break. Woo! Yeah, you know she she was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed her performance. And uh, from from the looks of things, uh, Maury's still a pretty big character in the sequel series, so here's hoping that's true. Um, but now, now we're on to our final role, to to the to the man we have been making fun of the whole the whole night. Ah, uh, love slowpoke. It's it's love slowpoke. It's love slowpoke. It is it is Lieutenant Susumu Kodai, who is played by Christopher Wakecamp. Uh, what did we think of Christopher's performance in this role? Hardy, would you like to start? Yeah, um, I think he did a, a fantastic job, and it's good to see. Because Christopher Wakecamp has sort of low-key been one of my uh, favorite new actors ever since I think he made his debut in Laughing Under the Clouds. And uh, I have been really impressed with him so far, and I'm finally glad to see that he gets to play a main role. Um, like, even though he was the he lead was the in lead in Laughing Under the Clouds, but then again, the three boys sort of shared the lead. Um, yeah. yeah, and not to mm-hmm. mention, like, there's a big plot point involving his character that... Yeah. Not gonna spoil here. Right. Somebody technically hasn't seen this, but owns yeah. it now. <laughs> Go watch Laughing Under the Clouds, kids. It's it's actually very, very fun. Yeah. But yeah, no, he finally gets to a big lead role, and, uh, and I think he just handles it very well. And um, not really much else to say. Excellent. Roots? Yeah, I, I like that Chris Wakecamp basically plays Kodai as, like, he's very good at what he is on the ship to do. <clears throat> he is, he's basically a soldier at heart, and he's just so, so dumb in everything else. <laughs> just so dumb. He's so oblivious. I want to learn how to fly your ship. Well, you can't. Why not? Because you can't. <laughs> Like, hey, you fly pretty girl. I mean, pretty good. <laughs> like, he's such a dork, and it's just such a lovable character. 
Like, I, I really can't wait to see what 2202 has in store for him. Like, I... Chris, you did a you did a good good job here. Like solid thumbs up. This is he's just so dumb. Is he adorable, Roots? He's very adorable. Megan? He's gonna fire his He's gonna fire that wave motion gun into your heart, Yuri. <laughs> <laughs> into your heart, Yuki. My love us <laughs> Um No man, like I feel really, I feel, it's always, like, really fun when I get to talk about Chris Wakehamp because, like, funny story, like, one night about, like, a year ago, I was just sitting and I just got a DM from somebody. He's like, hey, thank you for saying nice things about me and Nazetta, and it's like, now we're fucking here, buddy. Um, like, oh, God, like, it's, it's so weird that, like, I've said it a lot of times, like, you could tell when people are really into their uh, characters and their performances. And there are a lot of people who are probably calling bullshit on that. It's like, how can you tell somebody's really passionate about their show if they're acting? Like, no, it's, it's like, I need to point this out. Um, the scream in episode 24 yeah. of Yamato. Mm. This man coughed up blood. That is commitment right there. Oof. This man loves this show. Like, he, if, if you follow his Twitter, like, Chris, no, Chris Wakeham grew up on Star Blazers. Like, he's getting to live his dream right now. Playing Susumu Kodai. Like, I don't know if a lot of actors get that opportunity. I mean, there's obviously, like, people like Cliff and Alejandro and Damon who get to be characters uh, in Dragon Ball Z. But... In Dragon Ball Super or, like, Dragon Ball spinoffs. But there's not a chance for us. Hey, Chris, you're playing Susumu Kodai in the new Yamato show. You're playing the main character of your childhood franchise. You know that thing that got you into this business in the first place? Well, congratulations! I, I don't know I don't know if that's 100% true, but... I mean, I'm a, I'm a, like, I, he's a voice actor. I'm assuming cartoons you watch as a kid had some influence, but yes. It's true. Yes. But, like, you can tell that he bleeds legitimately for the show. And it's all over his performance. Like, yeah, there are so many things that he gets right about playing Kodai. Because you can easily make... You can... One false move on Kodai as, a, as an actor... For the character, and he goes from endearing to being kind of a douchebag. Yeah, he is. He is like one space level away from being space Rasuke. <laughs> if you fuck it up, like no offense, the guy doesn't understand why he wants to be in his cockpit for a very long time. Um, but goddamn, like. This is probably one of my favorite performances of his. Like, and I'm really happy that this is an upcoming anime season where potentially we might be getting to talk about him a lot. Like, I don't think we're doing uh, an episode on Full Metal Panic, but, like, he's going to be in the new Full Metal Panic show. Um, is There's a lot of, like, I'm very, like, I'm like with Hardy, like, this guy is low-key, like, probably one of the best actors that Funimation has. Mm. He does a lot of diverse roles, too. Like, I, I I, think that people have been sleeping on him for a while. Like, he goes back to, like, fairy tale. Like, pretty early on in fairy tale, though. As, like, with his time there. He doesn't, like... Like, I was actually really surprised when I was watching fairy tale last year that he showed up as one of the Blue Pegasus boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm rambling and I'm on take it away. Sure. Uh, I mean, I'm in agreement here. Chris is great. I, I, I kind of like, Kodai is like the character you would find at the lead of like a, a like Shonen Jump series. <laughs> Who is definitely in the wrong world for that personality, but he perseveres nonetheless. Uh, and Chris is just, he's great as this. I like, I just love how he plays Kodai's like... Like, like, just his, like, yeah, when he's, you know, being brash and stubborn and like, why can't I learn to pilot a ship? Why not? Explain this to me. I'm stupid. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
and he's he's just he's very I just like him a lot. He's got he gets you know pumped up and serious when he needs to be, and he's endearingly moronic at other times. And he's just, he's just really good at this. Like I can't imagine anyone else playing this role now. Uh, he's just so fun in this, and you can tell that he's having. He's, you can just tell like he's really excited to be here. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't have anything particularly more insightful to say, but I would like to share something I remembered. Uh, would you Would you like to know what um, Kodai's name in the uh, old Star Blazers dub was? Hmm. What? His character's name was Derek Wildstar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love all the adaptational scripts. They are so good. Yeah, and Dessler was I... Deslock. Deslock. I forgot about all this. Like this was. I wonder if one of the other buttons on Dessler's thing is a desk clock button. <laughs> like, <laughs> Star Blazers was a thing I watched as a kid, because it was on, like, public access television, like, all over the West Coast. Like, I can't, I can't remember an area I lived in when I was a child that didn't have it. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah? Were you going to say something? Yeah, moving on to final thoughts? Yes. Yes, we are moving on. Let's move, let us move on to final thoughts. Uh, what, what do we think about overall how this show went? Uh, Hardy, would you start us off? Yeah, I teased a bit about this at the beginning when we were talking about the director, but I guess my experience with this dub in general, I would not say it's the best dub I've ever heard because those are lofty claims. I certainly would never say it's a bad dub because that is simply untrue. It's just nobody really stands out except for maybe a handful of performances. That it, it kind of makes it difficult to really discuss on the show. That's why I kept saying, you know, everyone did a good job. That's all I have to say. It speaks a lot to the dub itself in that there is nothing wrong with it. I wouldn't see probably putting it, other than maybe like a stand-up performance like Dessler or something, which just blows everyone away. Um, I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with it, and that's perfectly fine. There has a market for a dub that just works, if that makes any sense. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've give I've yeah. heard some absolutely incredible dubs, but they've always had like one or two weak performances. This doesn't have that. This is a dub that simply just works. And they don't get enough credit as often as they should. And Yamato, Star Blazers, this dub in general, it's one of those dubs. And I really, really hope that it convinces more people to get into the lore and to start exploring more about Leiji Matsumoto and, and Yamato series in general. Because it made a fan out of me, for sure. I mean, I started this show not knowing... I started it half a year ago when it first started, watching it weekly, um, not knowing anything about it. And I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. And then as it kept going on, I'm like, I'm getting more invested in this. I really, really like this. And now I'm going to go to the next convention and I'm going to look for a model Yamato kit and it will be my first model that I will ever put together. That's how much of an impact this show made on me. Like my final nice. th final thoughts of the dub mm -hmm. is that it just it just works. That's all I can say. It just works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, roots. Now I should say from in the outset that this this was my winner for uh, best ensemble cast when it comes to the dubbies. Like it earned that hand over fist. Uh, it, there are a lot of moving pieces to this dub. A lot of characters that, for one reason or another, we weren't able to talk about today. Right. Like, every little piece of this puzzle had to be in exactly the right place for this to work. And I, I am really glad to say it did. <clears throat> I think people who grew up with the original Star Blazers, whether it was... Like, reruns on public access television or the people who were watching it as it aired the, for the first time on American TV. I, I think there is something that they will get out of this. It, it It's extremely nostalgic, even though I really didn't remember much of the show. It just... 
everything felt right. And that is very... That's very rare in anime dubs. Even these days. Because usually there's like... There's at least one or two little things you can nitpick on, on an anime dub. Even the ones you really love. But this... This one, I, I really can't find anything too... I can't really find anything to, to talk about negatively about this. Like, it, it's nowhere near perfect, but, like, this is something I could easily recommend to people who maybe don't really know much about uh, about anime or, or dubs. Like, this is, this is something I could recommend to people who like space operas, like Star Wars or Star Trek. Good stuff all around. Everybody did a great job. Two thumbs way up. It just works. It just works. Yeah. Time yeah, to be it... a broken record on the <laughs> It Just Works train. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, it's Hardy. The King... It's like King Crimson in JoJo's. It just works. Just works. <laughs> <sighs> you, like, messed... You just made a bunch of people angry. <laughs> uh, no, but for me, like I said at the, the very beginning of this show, um, I don't like sci-fi stuff a lot like i'm very much more like a fantasy urban fantasy like that type of person um this was a show that captivated me like i got super super into this um and the dub really did help if this was a dub that was had like root said like a nitpicks performance like one mediocre one of the bunch i don't think i would have gotten as into it as i did um, I love that the cast and crew was really passionate about this. Um, I loved every little, like, niche detail that they put on there. Like, like I said, as somebody who doesn't really love dub songs, I like that they dubbed the songs. Yeah. I like that mm. they, um, even though that this was a show, uh, that was really big, they didn't go for super, super obvious names in super obvious places. Like, I think this is probably one of the more creative castings that Funimation has done in a long time. Like, um, there wasn't like, oh, hey, like, we're gonna put Todd Todd Habercorn as, like, Shinya the slimy guy, or, hey, we're gonna get Tatum to be Dressler because Tatum can do suave. Um, I really like a lot of minute things about this, and I'm really happy I took the chance and started watching this, and I totally was only debating buying the limited edition of this that's coming out in July. And now I'm totally getting the limited edition of this that comes out tonight. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not gonna buy a model Yamato. Um, I'm not that type of person. I don't have the fucking space. I for don't have it. the space for it either, or the time. Is... But I want it. My space is reserved for Nendroids. Uh, but one of the other things I really do want to say, and I don't know if he's gonna get to listen to this, but I hope he does. Um, I really want to give a huge shout out to uh, Zethus. I. Zether. Zether. Sorry, there's two people with like very, very similar usernames on the Funimation Discord. Who is probably the biggest Yamato cheerleader on this planet. Um that guy fucking bleeds Yamato, and I can see why now. Um Thank you, dude, for being a really passionate fan and kind of like spurring me to watch this on beyond having signed up to do this. Um, and I'm really happy I did it with the three of you guys because we've been wanting to do an episode together yeah. for almost. Oh yeah, year this now. is the, cool, the, car. the, uh, the uh, cool crew, cool car crew. Yeah, fun car, fun yeah. car, fun car from A Fest. Yeah. Uh, but Amon, go ahead because this is your baby. I really like this. Sh I really like this show in general. Uh, I like I said, I I didn't know a lot about Star Blazers. I didn't have a lot of expectations going into this, other than like I generally like things of you know spaceships and space in it. I'll probably enjoy this show. Uh, this ended up being extremely my jam, like in ways that I was not really expecting it to be. Uh, and the dub definitely bolstered that a lot. Like, this was just everything I love about, like, sci-fi and old war movies and just with this wonderful acting and directing on top of it. Uh, I, I, I think... I th one thing I agree about is I think this is very much, like, an ensemble show uh, to the point where, like, it is kind of hard to pick out, like, really standout performances because it's kind of designed to not have any. 
it is it is very much just like a bunch of really talented people getting together and putting out something really good. Uh, and this, it was just a delight to listen to from start to finish. I was so I was so happy with this. I'm so happy that like I I didn't keep sitting on this for like God knows how long, and just got to sit down and watch it. This was so excellent. And I was so I just I, I was so happy with listening to this. Like just thumbs up all around. Like this is this is this might this might actually enter to like. Not necessarily like best does ever heard, but as far as like personal favorites go, this might go up there actually. I haven't quite decided yet, but like I, re I was really happy with this. It's probably my favorite dub for like a science fiction show. I mean, I, I, I it's up there, although it's probably not going to knock Bebop off the top because yeah. <laughs> Bebop. But True. I mean, look, look, saying you're not as good as Cowboy Bebop is not really that bad. It's like, oh no. You're not as good as what's why they considered maybe the best English language dub of all time. Yeah. Oh dear, like, that's so terrible. Oh, your movie's not as good as Casablanca. Exactly. <laughs> it's like it's 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 not that's not that's not really a, it's not really a demerit. That might actually be kind of, that, that might be more of a compliment than anything. Um, it, yeah, no, I was I was really happy with this. If anything, too, one of the things I also really want to say to you, just like as a compliment to the show, like, um. Even, like, people who aren't on the episode really fucking like this show. Like, like, Steph. Yeah! Like, mm. even Lilac really likes this, too. So, if that doesn't, like, literally everybody who's on the podcast who's watched the show and has, like, openly admitted to watching the show, like, likes the show. Even people who aren't on it, like, um, Pika Greg from our anime and, uh, the Funimation, our anime dubs and the Funimation Discord, like, really fucking likes Yamato. Um, M. Deller, who's starting it now. Um, there's a lot of people we know just who really just started the show and just genuinely enjoy it. And it's probably one of the best shows that I, I think one of the better examples of this. Uh, also me, I would kill for this to go in fucking Toonami. Oh, totally. Ooh, yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. Just so more people would watch it, because there are just some people who need to see it so that they can hear certain actors doing things and just break their expectations of those actors. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Space boats. Yeah. Space boats. Space boats. Man, this cruise got this cruise got done a lot quicker than I thought. Yeah, right. Maybe uh, tonight's the, the night that we got the boat. <laughs> We're going downtown, gonna pick up goats. <laughs> <laughs> Space goats, the final frontier. And ride, ride, how we ride. <laughs> Uh, the boat, baby. Don't tip the boat, the boat over. The boat over. <laughs> Except for you can't actually turn oh, this yeah. one over. Yeah, that's difficult. There's no, there's no up in space. Wee. Uh, all right. Uh, so on that note, uh, if you would like to watch Space Battleship of Yamato 2199, uh, you can watch it subbed on Crunchyroll, and you obviously can watch the dub on uh, Funimation's streaming website. Uh, you can get a subscription there for. What is it about now? Like seven dollars? Five ninety nine a month. I think it's like five. Like five ninety nine. Oh, there we go. Uh, it, there's a five. It was for five ninety nine a month. Uh, if you sign up, you can get a two week free trial. Uh, but do note they will ask for your credit card information. So at the end of that two weeks, you don't only charge. Make sure you cancel your subscription. But you might find out at the end of those two weeks, it's great having a Funimation account for about six dollars a month, and you might want to hang on to it. Um, also, as we mentioned, it is getting uh, the first part of a uh, home video release is coming out later this year, and presumably uh, part two will follow sometime shortly after that. Uh, tell us, uh, my fine cohorts, where can we find you pe find people on the internet? Hardy, right. if you'd like to start. Before I say that, I also want to mention that uh, the sequel series, Space Battleship Yamato 2202, has already started airing both on Crunchyroll in the sub and the dub on Funimation. It started immediately one week after... Yamato 2199 finished. So, good good news, guys. We get more Yamato already. Woohoo! Yay! Woo yeah. And uh, after watching the first episode, boy, are they off to one heck of a start. <laughs> mm, yeah. Excellent. And anyways, yeah, you can find me, Spaceman Hardy, at Spaceman Hardy on Twitter. I'm also a animation uh, moderator over on both their forums and their discord so if you want to come by either of those places and chill out you, know, you might think i'm a pretty cool dude you might think i'm a grumpy a-hole but i don't really care at this point so 
Check me out on Twitter. I retweet a whole lot of Final Fantasy fan art, a whole lot of goats, although I haven't been doing very many goats lately. I need to do more goats. Who wants more goats? I can use more goats. Yeah. Yay. Goats, goats are, are good. good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just uh, hook me up and uh, I'll see you on Twitter. All right. Uh, Roots? Yeah, you can find me on the twitter.com at Roots of Justice. Um, I mainly just retweet cute animal pics and memes. Uh, I have a YouTube page and blog that eventually I'm going to do something with, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I should note that um, 20, uh, Yamato 2199 is coming out July 31st on Blu-ray and DVD. Thank you. Uh, Megan? Uh, you can follow me at Queen Year 2 on Twitter. Uh, I also hang out on the Funimation Discord and the forums. Uh, that's about it. I ship post. All right, then. Uh, and you can find me, Amon, at Twitter at uh, AmonDuelUS. Uh, Duel is spelled with two U's, where I talk about music and usually you'll find a lot of fun opinions about, like, anime or comic books or something like that. Uh, and as usually ends with this. Also, I should note, uh, you should follow me on there because I have already purchased a Yamato model. Oh, wow, really? I bought it. I, I, I bought that thing after watching two episodes. Wow. Like, I'm a very, I have a very easy mark for a good, for a good model kit. Um, so eventually I will finish putting that together and I'll post photos to the, uh, to my Twitter. So look for that there. And, uh, usually when I, when I do an episode, I will, uh, whatchamacallit. I will, dusty yeah, so I'll give a dusty old song. I was I wasn't sure what to pick what to pick for this particular episode, uh, so I thought you know what what, what do I want to pick? You know something sci fi themed like uh, Starship Troopers by Yes or Two Thousand Light Years from Home by the Rolling Stones would seem very appropriate. But I thought I'm going to do something a little out of the box this time. Something that I think is very fun if you if you enjoyed Yamato. Uh, back in the very early 80s, there was a uh, Japanese-French co-production cartoon called Ulysses 31, which is like a sci-fi reimagining of the Odyssey, basically. Ooh. Now I'm bringing that up because... Sorry, what? It's going to only end well. Indeed. Uh, so... Uh, now that now I'm talking about the uh, the opening theme here, which is a banger, but the opening theme is not the thing to do. Go on YouTube, go find the opening opening credit sequence, watch that, then look for Ulysses 31 Redux, which is a video of a guy recreating the opening to Ulysses 31, basically using crap he found in his basement. <laughs> it is fantastic. <laughs> you should watch it immediately. What? It is one of the best videos on YouTube. Go do it now. Sick. Indeed. Uh, and if you want to follow us, the Dub Talk Podcast, uh, you are probably watching this on our YouTube page. So please, you know, like, subscribe, etc. on here. And you can also follow us on uh, various places, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and on t uh, Twitch currently at Dub Talk Podcast. Uh, so please follow us there as well. Uh, any final words, people? Yamato. Yamato. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good night, nerds. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Woo! Otaku on my <laughs> <laughs> Otaku on, dead dabba. Dang it, possessed again. <laughs> <laughs>